Welcome to ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. They're calling it the game of the year in the SWAC. Talented teams at the FCS level squaring off with a likely trip to the SWAC championship game on the line. A mere look at the standings tells you all you need to know about what's at stake. A win for Grambling would mean yet another trip to Birmingham for the SWAC championship game. Texas Southern trying to do something it hasn't done since 1968. A win in Johnny Cole's group would control its own destiny. And a good evening and welcome. Mike Morgan alongside former NFL linebacker Andy Robinson coming to you live from Houston, Texas. We've got two sets of Tigers for you tonight. But, Andy, we're going to start with the hometown team, Texas Southern, because they've got a chance to do something they haven't done in 42 years. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Down here in Houston, they have a championship train moving along, and they're only three victories away to winning their first outright swag title. Now, they have the high-octane, big-play offense, but it's been running on diesel fuel this year, averaging 180. 84 rushing yards per game. Combine that with the second-ranked defense in FCS, they have a good chance to move along to their quest for a SWAC title. Meanwhile, for the Grambling Tigers, look, they've got a lot of talented teams at a number of positions, but maybe the most talented player in the SWAC this year is the senior tailback, Frank Warren. Yeah, what can you say about Frank Warren? He's been starting since a freshman. He gets better every year. He puts up big numbers, and he passed one of the greats in the SWAC, Walter Payton, and he's fourth all-time in the conference and has a chance to retire tire being the all-time leading rusher in the swag conference if he can get things moving today the Grambling State Tigers have a good chance to put another swag title on their mantle and the Tigers of Texas Southern are on the field it's a swag showdown it's coming up straight ahead your a beautiful night here in Houston, Texas, Del Mar Stadium, the site of this matchup between Grambling and Texas Southern. A pair of Tigers both trying to make it to the promised land. That is the SWAC championship game in Birmingham. Here's the scenarios. For Grambling, it's pretty simple. Win tonight, and you can take off all the rest of that list there. Texas Southern, a little more complicated. They've got a win tonight and again next week against Arkansas Pine Bluff, a game which they would certainly be favored against. But again, bottom line is in all likelihood the team that wins tonight they are going to have either already their ticket punch or a very good inside track Rod Broadway now in his fourth year with the Grambling program he's a guy that's been around a long time coached under head coach Steve Spurrier of Florida part of that 1996 national championship team also an assistant at North Carolina as well and trying to take Grambling back to the swag championship game Johnny Cole what a job he has done in just a short amount of time when he took over the program they were at rock bottom just four wins in four years and already he's got them in contention for a swag championship and they haven't done that since 1968. Yeah, and Johnny Cole is very familiar with this program. Of course, he played here in the mid-80s as a quarterback, so he has a vested interest to see this Texas Southern program go in the right direction. A good crowd on hand. Texas Southern obviously will have the crowd on its side, although many of the Grambling Tiger fans have made the trip to Houston as well. Robert Hirsch is the kickoff man for Texas Southern. Kevin Batiste back deep to receive. It's a wobbler going to go to one of the up men eventually and finally falling down on it at about the 28-yard line. That is one of the up men. That is Edward Martinez, a fullback. So interesting strategy early on will give Grambling good field position. There's a starting quarterback for the Grambling Tigers. That is Anthony Carruthers. He is a true freshman out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Independence High School, one of the more renowned high school programs. He was a guy, he was not really scheduled to start. Very few true freshmen are, but it just came right down to it. He's the best guy for the job. They're going to try to win primarily on the ground with Frank Warren, but Anthony Carruthers is going to have to make a few big plays tonight as well. Here is that man, Warren, and he's got some daylight down the far sideline and shoved out of bounds at the 40-yard line of Texas Southern by Jerome Thomas. Frank Warren already off to a good start. Frank Warren is making it look easy. A little indecision by the Texas Southern defense, but if in doubt, go to number 23 because he's going to be the guy toting the ball tonight for the Grambling State Tigers. 
31 yards on that carry. He came into this game averaging seven yards a carry. Some of the numbers are just eye-popping on Frank Warren, who leads the conference with 1,370 yards rushing. On first down, play action. Carruthers looking, fires, completes. And that'll be another first down. That's the fullback O'Shea Hamilton, the sophomore out of Mesquite, Texas. So two good plays already for Grambling as we get you set with the starting lineups. We talked about Frank Warren. Kiari Thompson, number 15. He's a guy to keep an eye on for as well in the passing game and return game. He is electric when he is out there with the football. Offensive line, a veteran group. A lot of meat on that left side. Peoples and Lampton, you'll see Warren running behind them early and often. And this is a big athletic offensive line. They do a lot of job of pulling the guards around the edges, so you see those guys get mobile and make blocks on the edges of the defense. From the 25 on first down, back to the ground game, and not much doing there for Frank Warren, about a yard. Starting <laughs> defense for Texas Southern. Uh, they've got one of the better young guys out there in number seven, Marquise Jackson. He's only a sophomore, but he is among the league's leader in several categories. Linebacking core, very solid. Dewan Fulgham, a guy to keep an eye out for, number 44. And the secondary, I don't know if there's a better one in this league or at the FCS level. A bunch of veterans that can just fly all around the football. <laughs> On second down, back to the ground, and almost breaking a tackle was Frank Warren. A great wrap-up job by Jerome Thomas. And, Eddie, what did the defensive coordinator Kevin Ramsey talk to us about in the week? They are all about textbook tackling. Yeah, you have to tackle if you're going to play for this Texas Southern defense. They do a great job of not only getting to the football, but they don't miss a lot of tackles. And that's the signature of a good defense. That's what you hang your hat on if you're going to play good defense at any level of football. First third down of the game for Grambling. Out of the gun for others. Surveys, fires over the middle, and knocked away at the last moment. Derricus Purdy, and that might have saved a touchdown. The play action, now you're doing a post route, and Purdy, number 20, comes and undercuts that football. He had both hands on it, had a very good chance to intercept that football. He already has three interceptions on the year. Zoltan Riazzo is the kicker. Now, his long this season is from 39, and right here we're looking at about a 38-yarder, so this will test his range. Kick is on the way, plenty of distance, and it is good. Zoltan Riazzo, the junior, out of the state of California, his ninth field goal of the year, second longest, and the Grambling Tigers strike first, three to nothing, our score here from Houston. Captioning for selected programming is brought to you by Shape Ups. I came across the Shape Ups, I start feeling a lot better and you know, I think some crazy things all of a sudden. Hey. Maybe a comeback or two. <laughs> With just two races to go, there's a new sheriff in the chase, boys. Denny Hamlin took the points lead from the champ and has the cup in his sights. Rambling striking first on a six-play drive, covering 50 yards, three to nothing, our score. Eddie, as we take a look at the keys to the game, what stands out to you for these squads? Well, for Grambling State, Carruthers has to make big plays, not just passing the football, but also in the running game. Defensively, they have to stop the run, and that goes right into the next one. Force quarterback uh, Nelson for Texas Southern to beat you passing the football. He's thrown a lot of interceptions early in the year. For Texas Southern, of course, they must protect the football. He can't have the turnovers. When he doesn't have the turnovers, quite simply, they win the football game, and they must tackle Warren in the fourth quarter he gets stronger as the game goes on. And William Osborne, an All-American two years ago, he can have a big dynamic play in the return game to give Texas up in the edge. Well, he is back to receive, and instead it's going to go to number 22. That's Deshaun Daniels. Daniels looking for some room up the middle. A little spin move, and now swarmed under inside the 20. At about the 18-yard line, Dorrance Roberts on the stop, 14-yard return. Here's Nelson coming out for Texas Southern. Arvell Nelson, a senior out of Cleveland, Ohio. 
He's really had the turnover bug parts of the year. He's cut down recently, but 12 interceptions coming into this ball game that leads the swag and much like the game plan game plan for Grambling. He cannot throw it carelessly tonight. Turnover is going to be so big in this ball game. On the ground on first down, Marcus Wright. Not much doing there. Give him a couple. Let's take a look at the skilled positions for Texas Southern. Marcus Wright, very good running back. They've got two guys that can tote the rock and do it well. Randall Newsom, also a guy to look out for. We already talked about Osborne, the water bug, a playmaker. Offensive line, Charles Smith, the left tackle. He is the anchor, an All-American, 6'5", 325-pound senior. Second down, call it seven. And again, not much doing for Marcus Wright. Cliff Eczema in on the stop, one of the top tacklers in the SWAC 93 coming into the ball game. Defensively for Grambling, a very good unit. Texas Southern gets all the attention, but Antonio Leonard, a guy to look out for, he has really made some big plays in place of the injured Christian Anthony. Linebackers, Cliff Eczema, we just called his name, one of the top tacklers around. He'll be all over the field tonight. On third down and seven, play action. Rolling out is Nelson. Nelson lowers the shoulder and gets popped and dropped inside the 30. And that looks to be shy of the first down. But I like the decision that Arvell Nelson makes right here. It's third and five. No one's open down the field. He turns into a running back, and look how he finishes the run. That shows you how important this game is. Quarterbacks can't run out of bounds. You have to do everything you can to convert and get another first down for your team. Uh, fourth and a yard. Texas Southern will punt it away. Francois EJ4. High spiraling kick. Penalty flag already falls to the turf, and the punt will go out of bounds at around the 40. Let's see what the flag is. Our referee tonight is George McCullum. 22-yard punt, and nothing on the return. And it looks like it's going to be against Grambling, which Eddie, that's always frustrating. You don't get a return, but you get a penalty. Well, because you're sitting here in pretty good field position. Holding. On the return team. Number 33. Ten yards. In the run. First down. That is Edward Patterson. Holding for the on Grambling State University. 11-01 remaining first quarter. Grambling leading Texas Southern 3 to nothing. Our score. Don't. McRib is back at McDonald's. Tangy, sweet hickory barbecue sauce made with 100% tender, juicy, boneless pork topped with pickles and onions on our classic McRib bun. Did we mention the barbecue sauce? The simple joy of saucy goodness. is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. With Eddie Robinson, Mike Morgan with you here in Houston, Texas. A beautiful night. There was some rain earlier this afternoon, but right now, picture-perfect evening. We're not too far from downtown Houston. SWAC football here with a possible trip to the SWAC championship game in Birmingham on the line, Grambling. With a little flea flicker. Carruthers going deep, has a man, and tipped away at the last second. And that is the second time a defensive back for Texas Southern saved the score. This time it's Jerome Thomas, the freshman out of Miami. Well, you have to keep your eyes out of the backfield if you're a cornerback. Keep your eyes on your coverage. You can tell he was beat, but has the makeup speed to get there and knock that ball away at the last second. 
Mario Lewis was the intended target. You could see him get by the secondary. And if that ball's got another yard or so on it, that's going to be six. Instead, second down and ten. We saw a lot of Frank Warren on the first drive. And no pitch, and then a fumble quickly recovered by Grambling. Like Carruthers, it looked like he wanted to pitch to Warren, but didn't see the opportunity, kept it himself, and he paid for it. Well, this Texas Southern defense, every play looks like a blitz. Look how aggressive they are. You see eight and nine people in the picture, and they like to play on your side of the football field. So the young freshman, Anthony Carruthers, he has to make a quick decision at the quarterback position. Either you pitch it or you run it. He was indecisive, and he paid for it. Heads up play by the tight end, Larry Donald, to recover that fumble. But Grambling in a bit of a mess, third down and 15. Texas Southern loves the blitz. They only send four here, though. Carruthers fires, complete. Near the first down marker, going to be about a half a yard shy, depending on the spot. Mario Lewis, the senior out of New Orleans, on the catch. Give him about 14 and three quarters, maybe 15, we'll see. They're going to say it is short by about a foot, and Rod Broadway does not take long to make his decision. He's going to send the punting unit onto the field. Yeah, Broadway is a very, you know, cautious coach. He's going to play it by the vest and, and do the things in the coaching handbook. But with this te Texas Southern offense, you don't want to give them a half field if you don't get the first down at this point in the ballgame. Fabian Carter is the punter, a lefty. Not a great one. Osborne does not call for the fair catch, and he is buried. How he held on to that one, I don't know. 37-yard punt and a loss on the return. Gabriel Fleming just pounded him into the turf. A great timing. I mean, as soon as he catches it, you're right there for the hit, and Osborne very fortunate to hold on to the football, trying to make a big play in the return game. That was one of our keys. Osborne. A guy that was injured all of last year. He came back this year for his senior season. But two years ago, this guy was an All-American kick returner. So he has big playability in return game. From the 11-yard line, Arvell Nelson leads the troops. First down carry. Give him a couple. That's Marcus Wright getting it up the middle. You know, Wright is a guy we talked so much about Frank Warren, Marcus Wright coming in. One of the top rushers in the SWAC as well. 784 yards coming in. Well, we talked about it in the open. You know, you have the hobo offense with Johnny Cole, and his whole thing was high octane, big play offense. Well, this year, it's the running game that's really getting them over the top because they have such a good defense. You just want to control the clock and make big plays in the running game. A little swing pass to the right. And yeah, that's Deshaun Daniels knocked out of bounds after a modest gain. Well, if you follow Texas Southern football, you know they've got some catchy nicknames for their units, both offensively and defensively. As you just heard Eddie mention the offense, the hobo, it, it's now more of a, a low octane big play offense, more of a ground control offense, and defensively, 212 degree defensive. We'll talk about that quite a bit tonight. On third down and four. This is going to be a first down. Arbel Nelson takes it himself. He's got 82 rushes on the year. He's certainly a weapon with his feet, and you'll see a lot of that out of Nelson tonight. Yeah, we talked about this hobo offense. We said it's now running on diesel fuel. So they got the big guys working, Marcus Wright, Martin Gilbert, and keep in mind also Arbel Nelson. He's considered a third runner as well as a passer for this Texas Southern offense. Nelson. Feeds the back, and nothing doing on that one. Loss on the play for Marcus Wright, tripped up behind the line. A number of white jerseys surrounding him, including Antoine Rogers, the junior out of Atlanta, number 98. And you see number 50, Cliff Eczema, who's second in the SWAC, 93 tackles coming in, over 10 a game, three interceptions, two and a half sacks. He's really become an important figure. They lost the SWAC Defensive Player of the Year from last season, Christian Anthony. Thanks for really had to pick up the slack. When you talk about Christian Anthony, I mean, he was a great one. The numbers that he had last year defensively, 
for Grambling from the defensive end position, the sacks, the interceptions, forced fumbles, the tackles, everything he did, you can't replace him with one guy. And we talked to Coach Broadway, he said they don't really have a star player on defense, but they have a lot of really good players. But like you mentioned, Cliff Exima is that guy who's moving his game to that star level. You see him making a lot of big plays with his family defense. This is third down and four after the catch by Osborne. Out of the gun, pressure somehow gets out of it. A little spin move. And an ankle tackle at the 30. Otherwise, Nelson probably would have had first down yardage. And then some Derek Wilhite with a good tackle low. Derek Wilhite coming from his free safety position. Great job by Nelson invading the rush. Grambling coming with the blitz, but just a shoestring tackle to stop him from getting the first down here. One, two, three guys have a chance at him. Nelson making something happen, but that tackle puts Texas Southern in the punt formation. E.J. Four back on the punt for Texas Southern. Kiara Thompson, the number one returner in the league, back to receive all the way to 15, dropped it. Still on the ground. A scrum ensues. It's anybody's guess. Jerseys all over the place at the 15-yard line. They peel off the bodies, and it is Texas Southern football, the first turnover of the night on a 54-yard punt. Fifteen Thompson from Grambling just took his eyes off of the football. You have to look the ball all the way in in Texas Southern A couple of guys having a chance to get that recovery just a huge play once again He's looking up in the air, but when you take your eyes off that football That's when you have that simple mistake now Grambling in this situation They have to come on defensively and try to hold Texas Southern to three points But a big break for Texas Southern and Johnny Cole early in this football game. You just saw William Parker He recovered it Jabbar Perkins knocked it loose for Texas Southern on first down. All kinds of time for Nelson. Now he's going to tuck it and run. Has an alley right side, and he is swarmed under near the five-yard line. A nice play by Arvell Nelson. Cliff Exima brings him down. Yeah, Arvell Nelson, he's making plays happen in the football game using his feet. And I like the way he has the ball protection. You have to turn into a running back when you decide to run. So he's making good, aggressive decisions and helping move this Texas Southern offense down the field. First down and goal. Texas Southern going no huddle here. And off. Right side. And touchdown. A late signal, but the first score of the game, and it's number 23, Marcus Wright, his seventh touchdown of the year. Coming downhill, nothing fancy about this play. This is just put a hat on a hat. My big guys are going to block your big guys, and number 23, Marcus Wright, is able to plumb it in for the early scoring to give Texas Southern the lead in this football game. And it all started with the turnover. Texas Southern turned it over six times when these two teams met last year. Extra point is good. And Texas Southern off the turnover, a two-play drive results in the first touchdown of the night. We'll see how Grambling responds when we return. Forty remaining in the first quarter, Texas Southern on top of Grambling, seven to three. Alongside Eddie Robinson, Mike Morgan with you, a SWAC showdown here in Houston, Texas, and we talked about it early. Let's revisit the scenarios for these teams. For Grambling, a win tonight, and they are already in the championship game. Texas Southern, they can win tonight, and they'll still need a win against Arkansas Pine Bluff next week. If they do that, they will be there a chance to win its first. SWAC championship since 1968. Kickoff field at the 25 and a pounding hit at the 33-yard line. O'Shea Hamilton on the return. Want to remind everybody, Saturday afternoon, ABC and ESPN deliver a huge game of the Big Ten as Penn State. If I say right after that ball game when they put them down, hey, great win. Thanks for the celebration. Let's get ready for Ohio State. Uh, he's, he's not one to, <laughs> to dwell on anything or to really live too much in accolades, which obviously he's got plenty of. And he joined a pretty distinguished group with that win as Rambling going to the ground 
on first down. Strung out nicely by the Texas Southern defense. It's the first carry of the night for number 24. That is Riddell Pippen. Frank Warren's going to get the bulk load of the carries. By the way, let's clarify a couple of things early on, okay? You're Eddie Robinson, no relation to the legendary Eddie Robinson, the coach at Grambling, former linebacker. We'll, we'll get into Eddie's resume here in just a moment, but I want to make that clarification first. And if you're wondering why we're not saying the mascots too much, because they're both the Tigers, so we don't want to confuse you at home. Two sets of Tigers here. Pass play on second and long, and he's got a man at the 35. Nothing but daylight for Kiare Thompson. Touchdown, Grambling. 64 yards through the air, Carruthers to the junior out of Sacramento, California. And the difference, check out number seven, Marquise Jackson. He has the pressure. He almost gets there, but he's able to get the big playoff. Anthony Carruthers to the Pierre Thompson for the go-ahead score. And Pierre Thompson is definitely the big play guy for Grambling State. They have to get him the football, and they do in a big way on this drive. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting about Grambling. They, they have the fewest pass attempts in the SWAC, but they've got the best yards per pass attempt, and that's the reason why Thompson averaging over 21 yards a reception. Extra point by Riazzo is up and through, and Grambling, just like that, takes the lead back. So two very good defenses getting beat by some pretty big plays here early on in this game. Well, we mentioned Eddie Robinson just a moment ago. Penn State's Joe Paterno just reached 400. How about 408 career wins for Eddie Robinson? Second most all time in any division. And we want to talk about a guy that was here for a legendary career. How about spanning 11 presidents from Franklin Roosevelt to Bill Clinton? Passed away in April of 2007. And Boy, I don't know if there's a resume in all of football that gets better than that one. Well, Coach Robinson, of course, playing in the SWAC conference, I was able to know this guy. Just a class act from top to bottom. One thing I, I like him, but he would always say, I've had the same job in the same wife for over 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> and when you talk about him and Joe Paterno, it's hard-pressed to see how coaches can stay at one program for that long now. I mean, the alumni, they just won't let it happen. You have one losing season, and they want to make a change. And a final point of clarification, that's not your, your father. Yeah, not related. No, no relation whatsoever. <laughs> but I've been getting that my entire life. I'm I, sure you I, have. I'm from New Orleans, and I played in the conference at Alabama State, so everyone always seems to think I'm related to Coach Robinson. It's really an honor. I know his son and his grandkids that live in the Atlanta area, and they do a great job. I mean, there's the Eddie Robinson museum that they have in Grambling now. And, I mean, this guy has just done so much, not just for Grambling, but also the entire SWAC conference. 17-yard return for Osborne, giving Texas Southern pretty good field position from the 22. And back comes Arvell Nelson and company. Well, last year was a, a shootout of sorts. The defenses for both squads improved. We haven't seen it thus far. A lot of big plays already in this game. That's William Osborne. He is a special teams ace, but you got to pay attention to him in the passing game as well. It's his 20th grab of the year. A 5'8 water bug out of Marshall, Texas. Got a couple of touchdowns already in the passing game. And if you're Texas Southern, you can't panic because your defense gave up a big score. I mean, they have a really good defense. They'll settle down and make some plays. You have to still keep running your same consistent offense. Big time hit there by number 54, Jacardi Carter. You can hear that one up here. You like to hear those pads popping by the linebackers. I get excited off of those type of plays. And, and keep in mind, and let's hear it. Goodness. Just a good form tackle right up the middle by the Grambling State Tigers. Carter is just a red shirt freshman out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Now third down and six. Brandon rushing four all day for Nelson. Completes the pass at the 30. And muscling ahead to the 36-yard line for a first down is Joseph Anderson. Great pass protection, first of all. Nelson just sits down and he waits till that crossing route comes. And he does a great job of throwing it where the receiver is going to be so he can catch it and still get the run after catch. 
Good yardage up the middle for Marcus Wright. On first down, give him four. And Coach Johnny Colin, talking about Nelson, the quarterback, says he's really settled down and he's coming into his own at the right time. He's a senior. He started last year. He had a problem with the turnovers. But in the last five games, only two interceptions. If he doesn't turn the ball over, it gives this offense an excellent chance to put points on the board. On play action. Nelson rolling out. Safe pass there. Complete. And a first down. That's number 84. That's the tight end, Kirk Fitzhugh. He's 11th catch of the year, a junior out of Compton, California. And here's a kid with 4-5 speed, and they really like his potential. He only a junior. He'll be back next year. And they say he's really growing into that tight end position, a guy that they feel like can stretch the field in passing formations. Johnny Cole's offense racing to the line after every play. On first down, a little jitterbug tap dance move by Martin Gilbert. He's the smaller of the two backs, junior out of Dallas, Texas, tripped up by Derek Wilhite. How about Johnny Cole in, in this offense? I, I thought what he told us earlier in the week was very interesting. This is a guy, former quarterback at Texas Southern. He used to love to throw it all over the all over the yard, and he realized, hey, I've got to adjust. Big yardage up the middle for Arbel Nelson. He's their leading rusher so far in this ball game. Good job with the zone read. You fake it and you keep it yourself. Arvell Nelson, the guys are blocking up front. A big physical offensive line. And they're able to create holes for the backs and the quarterback. And Johnny Cole upset because he just had to burn a timeout. Somebody was not where they were supposed to be. It's as animated as we've seen Johnny Cole. <laughs> Grambling leading Texas Southern. By a score of 10-7. Reminder, Saturday night, ESPN delivers an SEC showdown. Can Steve Spurrier do it? He's been in the SEC title game a number of times. He returns to the swamp, this time as the head coach of the Gamecocks of South Carolina, who have never been to Atlanta. They're taking on Urban Meyer's 22nd-ranked Florida Gators for the SEC East title. It's college football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels on ESPN Saturday at 7.15 Eastern time. Well, a guy that's familiar with Steve Spurrier is the head coach of Grambling, Rod Broadway. And this is the 1996 photograph right after the Gators won the national championship in New Orleans. All right, here you go. Eddie Robinson. Where's Waldo? Find. Oh, look at that. I've been working on this. Uh, <laughs> come on. I've been working now. on this all pregame for hours. So I, I couldn't find him at first. But if you look, I think that's Rod Broadway, one of the coaches on Steve Spurrier's staff. So he has a national championship under his belt already. I think you cheated on that. I don't think you could have found him that quickly. But nicely done anyway. That, that is indeed Rod Broadway. Part of four SEC titles and one national championship. Rod assistant at the University of Florida. Not much doing there for Nelson up the gut. A couple of white jerseys on the stop, including Sir Derek Olendrith. Eighth play of this drive coming up for Texas Southern. So far, the, the scoring has been fast and furious. This is the longest drive of the game. Second down and nine. And some good yardage up along the right side by Martin Gilbert. Brought down by Derek Johnson. Yeah, Texas Southern was able to take advantage of the muff punt by Grambling and get their first score. Of course, the Tigers respond with the long touchdown pass, but this is kind of what we expected. You know, both teams like to run the football, so we expected the drives would kind of be sustained in, in 10 or 12 play drives, and now we have a, a third down conversion attempt by Texas Southern. Third down and four. Nelson is five of five in this game. And a motion that's Osborne. Throwing right and juggled and finally hitting the ground. That ball was almost caught and almost intercepted. Joseph Anderson probably should have held on to that football. It was not a poorly thrown ball at all. They yeah, set up fourth down. You have to make that catch on third down. Joseph Anderson, the leading receiver on this football team, right in the bread basket. You have to look it all the way in and realize I'm already across the first down marker. You don't have to make a football play. Just catch it, secure the football, and it would be a first down. First incompletion of the night. And on fourth down and four, Johnny Cole's game is going to go for it. 
It's going to be Nelson. He's got some room up the middle. Nelson still on his feet, galloping toward the 10-yard line, and finally gang tackled at the 11. Fred Gaines with a terrific block to open up the hole, 17 yards. And I tell you what, we're going to have to rename this Hobo offense because never have I seen Johnny Cole call a running play on fourth and four. <laughs> but Arvell Nelson, look how determined this quarterback is running the football. This isn't a tailback. This is a starting quarterback. It shows you the importance of this football game for this Texas Southern University team. Nelson goes 6'5", 210 with those long legs. Right. Gets it up the middle for a yard, maybe two. And that'll put a lid on the first quarter, but a very exciting first quarter here in Houston. Grambling leading Texas Southern 10-7, our score. Yes. Be missing in the whole scenario, which would be unfortunate. Going to be a lot of dominoes falling here in the next few weeks. I mean, every week is so much. So many things that can happen in college football. This is the 12th play of the drive. Nelson looking. Now he's going to tuck it and run toward the end zone. And just shy, shoved out of bounds at about the one by Cliff Eczema. And Eczema almost pushed him across the goal line. I know, I know you're running full speed. Check it out here at the end of the play, number 50, Eczema. Good job by Nelson just faking. He was running that thing the whole way. But that push at the end almost propelled him across the goal line. First and goal from the one. Nelson up, over, and in. Touchdown, Texas Southern. The 6'5", Arvell Nelson showing a little hang time on that one. And the Texas Southern Tigers retake the lead. Nelson is just playing lights out tonight. He's really taking control of this Texas Southern offense, not just by throwing the football, but his energy in the running game, and he's making all of the right decisions so far in this ball game. Robert Hershon for the extra point. A 13-play drive for Texas Southern covering 78 yards. And Hirsch tacks on the extra point to make it 14 to 10. Well, with his victory last weekend, Denny Hamlin grabbed the points lead from Jimmy Johnson now with just two races left in the tightest championship battle in Chase history. Hamlin has the four-time defending champion on the ropes. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues with the Cobalt Tools 500 at Phoenix on ESPN Sunday at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Mike Morgan, Eddie Robinson with you at Del Mar Stadium in Houston, Texas. Texas Southern leading Grambling 14 to 10. They are excited about football again here at Texas Southern. It was a, this was a program that was very successful back in the 50s and the 60s and then really hit a low point three, four, five years ago. Johnny Cole takes over. Johnny Cole, the former quarterback at his alma mater here, Texas Southern. And boy, Eddie, what a job he has done in a short amount of time. I think the first thing you have to look at is the talent level. He has some football players out there that he can coach. He's done a great job of recruiting, beating the bushes, getting transferred from the Division I level. We're all coming down here to play, and they're doing a great job. Another squibber. Field about the 20. 24, Rondell Pippen. And out of bounds past the 40-yard line. Well, we talked about Johnny Cole. And, you know, to give you a little bit of, of background on Johnny Cole, Johnny Cole coming from Lane College and doing a great job there. Nobody thought that he could do what he has done return, in this short amount of time. The 4 yards record, from keep in mind now, they, first they won four games in four years, including two winless seasons before he arrived. Six and five last year. Again, nobody saw that coming. And now the unthinkable, a chance at making it to the SWAC championship game. He's got two more wins to pick up. This game here tonight against Grambling, and then next week, and if he can do it, boy, this Texas... Southern program will be on cloud nine. Absolutely. I mean, this is this is new ground for this Texas Southern program to have a chance to control your own destiny and win the next two football games and you're in the championship game. What more can you ask for? A holding penalty backing Grambling up at the 20 on first down Carruthers lobbing it over the middle and in a 
intercepted. Intercepted. It was intended for Mario Lewis. And that ball just kind of hung up there and finally picked off by Zach Gallo, one of the safeties on this team, a junior out of Port Arthur, Texas. Yeah, you just put too much air under the football, and Zach Gallo, he was the guy that was beaten on the deep pass earlier. He comes back, he redeems himself, he makes a great play on the underthrown football by Carruthers. I have a penalty flag. This might be a celebration penalty on Texas Southern. Intercept on the play after the play was dead. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Texas South, 15 yards, first down. So that'll back him up 15. But so far, the battle of turnovers being won by Texas Southern again last year in this game. Johnny Cole's game turned it over six times. Quarterback Arvell Nelson had four interceptions. He's been the player of the game thus far. Handoff. Up the middle, a couple of tough yards. We're talking to Coach Cole of, of Texas Southern before the football game. He looked at me and he said, Eddie, if we don't turn the ball over, if our quarterback can control the interceptions and just you know protect the football, I think our defense can play with Grambling. And that's what you're seeing today. They gave up that one long pass play, but he feels throughout the year that when they don't turn the football over, they can play with anybody in the country. Gilbert, who had the last carry, is the deep back here. The option play. Nelson going to keep it himself. Nelson weaving his way through traffic, picking his way through tacklers, and gets first down yardage. Is this Vince Young or Arvell Nelson? <laughs> well, just a simple option play, but it looked like he's keeping it the whole time. I mean, Arvell Nelson has basically said, I'm going to put this Texas Southern team on my shoulders, and I'm going to make the big plays to get us to the one more step closer to that championship game. Now, they have not been able to bring him down yet. All right, spins and gets popped and dropped at midfield. Guess who? Cliff Eczema. Who else? Tackling machine number 50. He's out of North Miami Beach. Heavy dose of the running game by this Texas Southern offense. I mean, they're averaging 187 yards per game rushing the football. Have scored 17 touchdowns rushing. Have another one today. So they really hang their hat on running the football and playing good solid defense and you can see that early on in the ball game. On second and long. Nelson intercepted at the 35 and down to the 41 yard line. Another turnover in this game. This time Grambling's Derek Wilhite picks it off. Maybe going to the well once too often. This Grambling defense awfully good, Eddie. Well, Nelson, he just threw it behind the receiver. I mean, Osborne was open, but he threw it behind him. If he leads him to the sideline, that should be a catch. That's a mistake on Nelson. We give Grambling credit for taking advantage of it and making the interception. Nelson threw a, a wounded duck on that one. And that's what Johnny Cole, I mean, a former quarterback, he's telling him right now, hey, just make the easy play. He's open. Don't do anything extra. Just execute the offense. A big break for Grambling. Trailing 14-10, and the ball's on the ground. And it looks like Texas Southern has recovered. They do. Back-to-back -back turnovers. A game of hot potato here in Houston. Marquise Jackson on the recovery. Never had it. Came out hot from the center, and the young quarterback could never corral the football, and from there it was downhill for Grambling. And whatever team loses this football game, they're going to look at the turnovers and say, we had our chances to win. Both teams with the interceptions, putting the ball on the ground, Grambling did early. Now a second time, they're going to say, we had our chances to win this football game. On first down, big hole right side. Past the 20, dragging defenders to the 15. A big run for Marcus Wright. 20 yards. That's been a familiar sight for Texas Southern. You see you get the double team, the big block up the middle, and Marcus Wright is off to the races right in the heart of that Grambling State defense. First 
and 10, it's Gilbert. Breaks a tackle and staggers forward past the 10. A penalty flag on the play. This one looks like it'll be coming back. Holding. Offense. 62. 10 yards. Replay. Second down. Now that's Charles Smith. Their top weapon on the offensive line. A guy that was. 380 pounds at one point. He finally traded in that cafeteria for the weight room. They say everything's big in Texas, right? So <laughs> they have some big guys on this offensive line, but well, he may still be close to 380 from what I can see. Couple of biscuits shy. Right. Those guys have been playing extremely well this entire football season, blocking for these two talented runners. Nelson reversing field, throwing toward the end zone. Jump ball and incomplete. Boy, that was some nifty running by Nelson. He, he did the play action to the right, then reversed his field to the left, and then chucked it up there, a jump ball. But I like the throw by Nelson. You, you have a, a receiver one-on-one -on -one and Kurt Fitzgerald, I mean, he's a big guy. He goes 6'5". Hey, give him a chance to make a play in the back of the end zone. It's either an incompletion or it's a touchdown. You have one-on-one -on -one coverage and you have a size advantage. Why not take a shot? Dominic Bell, good coverage on that last play intended for the tight end, the 6'5", Kirk Fitzhugh. Nelson's going to... And a penalty flag. I think they might have too many men on the right. field trying to get Illegal. cute Substitute there. On the offense. Five yards, replay, second down. And they were trying to bring 13 Rico Smalls, one of the backup quarterbacks who doubles up as a wide receiver, in on that play, and too much confusion, that'll back him up. Keep in mind, after the big run by Marcus Wright, I mean, Texas Southern, I mean, they were all the way down to the 17-yard line with a first and 10, so now they're backing up, going in the opposite direction, and, and not even in field goal range at this point. So second and 25. And here is the backup quarterback. The aforementioned Rico Smalls, but he is buried behind the line. It's going to be third down, a cheap cab ride now. Another loss on the play. Jamarcus Savage sniffed that one out early and buried him for a loss. Time to get Nelson back in the game. We're Texas going. Southern two for five on third down. Going with an empty backfield, five wide receivers. Third and 25. Nelson, if he can make this happen, <laughs> I'm going to fall off my chair. He does get some positive yardage, but brought down to the 20 by Jacardi Carter. So decision time now, 38-yard field goal is what you'd be looking at. A good job by Nelson. You don't want to force a ball. You just threw an interception earlier. You, you got lucky. Or you were fortunate because you had a fumble by the other team to get it back. Give your kicker a chance to put three more points on the board. Hirsch. Kick is on the way. And good. Just inside the left upright. Not necessarily pretty, but effective. And Texas Southern swells the lead to seven. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of college football presented by McDonald's. Mike Morgan alongside Eddie Robinson with you in Houston, Texas, where the story thus far tonight, Eddie, it's been turnovers. Yeah, pretty wild game here early on. Grambling State with the muff punt. Texas Southern was able to recover and go on to get seven points. The freshman, Anthony Carruthers, hanging one up. You can't do that. Zach Gallo with Texas Southern gets that interception. And then Arvell Nelson, he's feeling quite generous. But Grambling State gives it right back to him with a number of another fumble. It's two turnovers apiece. And I think all the both of the coaches say that's enough of that. Let's not be so generous and give the ball away to our opponents. It really has been uh, somewhat out of character for both these teams to be playing this kind of game. There's a lot of room on the right side and still on his feet past midfield. That's Patterson. Patterson down the sideline. Patterson finds the end zone. Touchdown, Grambling. 95 yards. That is just what the doctor ordered for the Grambling Tigers. And with an extra point, we'll be tied. 
Great job blocking up front. They've been squibbing the ball the entire day. Texas Southern, they kick one deep in Grambling State. They make them pay with the return. Edward Patterson and that good key block at the end of that return, which was legal. He got his head in front. Great job by Grambling State returning the football for a touchdown. A sophomore out of Monroe, Louisiana. Coming in, he was not one of the top return guys on the team, but he made the most of that one. Extra point is not through, and we're tied at 17. And that's one if you text your Southern, you want to have back because they were squibbing the ball the entire first half. So we were just saying, hey, won't Grambling move somebody up right. because they're going to squib it again. You kick it deep, and then Edward Patterson has the big play with great blocking with that return team by Grambling to give them that, that touchdown to tie up this ball game. Again, what's at stake tonight for these two teams? A trip to Birmingham and the championship game for the SWAC title. All Grambling has to do is win this ball game, and they are in. If Texas Southern wins, and they win next week against Arkansas Pine Bluff, they are in. Now, you see there are a couple of other scenarios. If, if this is where it gets a little bit confusing, so hold on, folks. If Grambling wins or loses tonight, but then wins against Southern, and then Texas Southern loses next week, they're in. If Texas Southern wins tonight, and Grambling loses to Southern, well, then they're in automatically without having to worry about what happens next week. I just confused myself, so hopefully I didn't confuse everybody else out there, but that's what we're looking at tonight. Well, I think from the coach's standpoint is very it's an easy sell to your football teams because you say we control our own destiny if we win the rest of our football games we're in the championship game and that's texas southern and grambling past that that's all i want to tell them we go out and win and we play in birmingham on december 11th 17 17 our score what a first half i mean i feel like we played four quarters we we still got a ton of time we're not even halfway through the second quarter in this game and we've seen a little bit of everything well the way these teams play defense I'm expecting a 13 10 ball game. Right. maybe you talk about the second rank defense coming into this game with Texas Southern and Grambling sub Grambling State plays great defense also both coaches like to run the football so you're expecting just to you know rock them sock them knock each other down score 13 10 game over but we're 17 17 with quite some time to go in the second quarter and let us clarify that for a moment. When you say Texas Southern coming in second in defense, we're talking second in the nation in all of FCS. These two teams, number one and number two in the SWAC defensively. Texas Southern, number two in the country. They have been unbelievable. You look at some of their numbers, not only are they second in the country, but they've got all kinds of guys with sacks and interceptions. It's really been remarkable, and Grambling has been salty as well throughout right. the season, and yet we've already got 34 points on the board, and we've got a long way to go, folks, so stick around. This one's going to be exciting. I think both coaches are, are scratching their head right now. I mean, this is definitely not the game plan that they had drawn up for tonight, but, hey, you have to adapt. You have to coach on the run, make your adjustments at the half, and just get out of this one with a victory if you can. Backpedals and cutting in front of him is Daniels and Daniels almost broke one uh, If he would have gotten through that alley. He might have taken it the distance Good field position a 22 yard kickoff return ABC's Saturday Night Football delivers regional action Most of the nation will see a big 12 battle as number 10 Oklahoma State takes on Texas Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Some of the nation will see USC at Arizona or Clemson at Florida State. Go to ESPN.com and search maps to see where you can find your game. A late flag on the play. And we got offsetting personal fouls. Something tells me, Eddie, with the intensity of this game and what's on the line, that's not the last time we're going to see the signal for a personal foul. Well, hey, you're going to see who's the toughest Tiger in the swag. That's basically what it's down to. And both of these teams, I mean, they've had some heated battles the last couple years with Grambling getting the best of Texas Southern. But, hey, Nelson, he's trying to put things on his shoulders tonight. You look at some of his numbers. Already 84 yards in the rush game and a touchdown. Break the market. Nelson barking out the signals. Looks like an audible here. 
play clock down to five. And banging his way to the 30-yard line on the carry. That's Marcus Wright. Once again, number 50 for Grambling. Cliff Exima right in the middle of that battle has a nose for the football. Came into this game with 93 tackles, eight tackles for loss. And he's been the guy that has been stepping up to make the big plays defensively for this Grambling State defense. Texas Southern taking a little more time between plays before you couldn't catch your breath before they were snapping it again. Nelson on the run. And will wisely throw that one out of bounds. That's what you were talking about earlier, Eddie. If it's not there, just throw it away. Well, you have to play smart, and you have to realize I have a very good defense. I have the second best defense in the country. It's nothing wrong with running three plays and punting because I can trust my defense to eventually create a turnover, give me a short field. They'll help the whole team out and make a big play for me. So I think Nelson, as he learns and matures as a quarterback from the beginning of the year to now, he's realizing that every play is not going to score a touchdown. Something to keep an eye on this quarter, and particularly right now, first the third down and six. Nelson intercepted at the 35. Down the sideline, up the middle, and into the end zone. That is Derek Wilhite. Second time he's picked one off, and this time for six. The turnover fest continues here in Houston. And that's what we talked about with Nelson. I don't know if this is a miscommunication with Will Osborne, but this is just too easy of a play for this Grambling State defense. A pick six, the most exciting play in football, interception for a touchdown, puts Grambling on top. It's amazing. I was just about to say the Grambling defense might be a little tired because the only play they've had this quarter was a special team's return right. for a touchdown. They've been on the field the whole quarter, and then they come up with a big turnover. So now it's Grambling back on top. Grambling has 14 points if this extra point is true. 14 points this quarter, and they haven't run a single offensive play. It's amazing. <laughs> Here's the extra point. It is true. So Grambling on top, 24-17. It was Nelson's game before. He's upset with himself on that one, though. Tomorrow. Close your eyes if you want. Ah. .com now to start playing. 24 to 17, nobody, and I mean nobody, expected this scoring output here in the first half with 8.49 remaining. A ton of turnovers in this game, and yet a, another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty after the last touchdown, so Rambling's going to kick it off from the 15. Should be good field position for Texas Southern. And when you're in a big football game like this with the emotions, you have to keep control of yourself the whole time because you hurt your team with those personal fouls. Osborne's going to have a chance at this one from the 20. Osborne stops, starts, and then gets pushed out of bounds at the 43 and a late penalty flag and some jawing going on on the sideline. Dorrance Roberts on the tackle after a 27-yard kickoff return. Well, goodness, I, I don't know what else we can expect here, Eddie, in the next two and a half quarters, but if it's anything like the start of this game, we've got a lot more incredible action here in Houston. Another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. George McCollum. Better have brought the uh, chloroseptic for that voice. He might be using it a lot tonight. And when you're coaching, you could put up with a holding penalty here or there, maybe you're offside, you know, an aggressive penalty where guys are trying to win. But these personal fouls, the dead ball penalties, I mean, the referees have to call them. That was something that happened along the sideline towards the end of the play. The players have to keep control of yourself. I mean, it's a big ball game. You're excited, you're emotional, but you have to play within the whistle so you don't hurt your football team with that emotion. You have to use it for positive and not negative. 
So here we go from the 29. Texas Southern going to the ground. Big hole up the middle. Churning the legs all the way through on the run. Marcus Wright, he's going to be busy tonight. Coming in the second leading rusher in the SWAC. He averages nearly five yards a carry. Nelson has been the primary rusher so far tonight. And he's been all over the place, mostly good, some bad. Upended at the 40-yard line. That's 25, Martin Gilbert. And one of the keys for Grambling State defensively coming into this ball game was to stop Texas Southern from running the football and force Arvell Nelson to beat you throwing. And so they feel like if they can keep him in the pocket and make him throw it, I mean, he's already thrown two interceptions, one for a touchdown. And he threw four in the meeting last year, so and that, that's definitely the strategy here. Uh, we thought this could be a game of three yards in a cloud of dust. The big nasties going at it. Very little scoring defense. It's been anything but that thus far. Well, and we still may see that because Warren is a back that gets better as the game goes on. They like to use him in the fourth quarter to salt away a ball game. So you never know. It could turn back to that. On second and nine, it's right again. Ball came out. Question was, was he down? I didn't hear a whistle. The field judge coming in late. And they will say he was down. Very close. Almost looked like the, the field judge would field judge was uh, caught by surprise on this one. Let's check it out. Give it to him! Give it to him! Give it to him again! Again to the ground, the Tigers on third and five, and that play is bottled up right away. So Texas Southern will have to send the punting unit out. I think Coach Cole is going to play this game just a little bit more conservative because you've seen the interceptions by Arvell Nelson. You know, I don't know if they're, they're, they haven't really all been his fault. I mean, the second one, you couldn't tell if the receiver wasn't on the same page, but the bottom line, two interceptions, one for a touchdown. That's the one thing that can cause Texas Southern to lose this ball game in a hurry is throwing those interceptions. Yari Thompson back to receive. High kick and short. Takes a Texas Southern bounce. That's a pretty wise play by 83 to just catch it and fall down. Van Phillips saving some yards right there. 36 yard punt, no return. Back with more of the exciting action from Houston in a moment. And welcome back. 620 remaining. In the first half, a very exciting first half here in Houston. 24 to 17, Grambling leading at Mike Morgan, Eddie Robinson, and we are pleased to be joined. Uh, the third member of our broadcasting team, at least for a driver, so the athletics director for Texas Southern, Charles McClellan. And uh, boy, Charles, what an exciting game thus far, huh? Yeah, 24 to 17. Really didn't expect that many points with these two defenses coming in. I don't think anybody could have expected it. You've seen this Texas Southern defense obviously all season long, and and number two in the country and Johnny Cole's not used to seeing 24 points on the board. Yeah, very uncharacteristic. But when we turn the ball over, we tend to give up a lot of points. Arvell is going to have to hold on to that football in order for us to remain against a strong Grambling State football team. Well, we've talked about it uh, throughout the broadcast already, Charles. What a special season this has been for your program that I don't know if many people expected Texas Southern this quickly under Johnny Cole to, to come this far. First of all, talk about the hiring of Johnny Cole and, and, and how you knew he would be able to, to do such a great job in such a short amount of time. Well, Coach Cole is an alumnus of Texas Southern University, and he's had a winning record everywhere he's been. He coached at uh, Lane College prior to here, turned that program around. He also coached at Alabama State and Tennessee State, won everywhere he's been. So we expected that at Texas Southern. On second down, Carruthers getting out of trouble weaving his way through traffic and lassoed down from behind at the 35 yard line that'll be a first down as we talk about this program uh, Charles it, obviously there's a lot of excitement in the air about what this team has done there's also a lot of excitement about the facilities being upgraded got a really nice stadium coming up in 2012 yeah we're somewhat of a transient program now we play wherever we can find uh, but we have a brand new uh, deal with the Houston Dynamo the professional soccer team here 85 million dollar project 22,000 seats about 32 suites that's going to be a club area and 
that's an excellent deal for Texas Southern University. Now you just got to pack it, right? Well, if we can continue to win, we will pack <laughs> it. And I think the best thing for us, we're going to pay an upfront payment of 1.5, and all of the revenue will be ours. Intended target was 25. Mario Lewis knocked away by Jerome Thomas, one of the very talented secondary men on this Texas Southern defense. Yeah, Grambling State taking another shot deep with the young quarterback, but good job of having the makeup speed to come back and knock that ball away. Now, Charles, now I've been living in this Houston area since 1992, so I've been to quite a few Texas Southern games. A great crowd tonight on a Thursday night. Nonetheless, I mean, you have to be excited about having your own stadium. The Metro Rail is going to take you from campus right to the stadium. That's going to be big once it's finished. Well, we're in the center of Houston. We're in Third Ward, Texas. Our crowd is a great, great crowd. The alumni provides a huge level of support for us. So we need top-ranked facilities. We can put 20, 25,000 people in the stadium each and every game, and we can continue to play at a high level. So the city joined in. And you talked about the light rail. It'll pick the students up from campus, drop them off at the front door. The county joined in, the professional sports team. Win-win for everyone. And we're just excited to have this great of a facility coming for our Texas Southern time. And one thing they always say, America loves the winner. So you, you win like this, you win your next couple games, get to the SWAC championship. I mean, just think of the excitement of people wanting to come to that new facility. Well, this is a critical game, not only for our football program, but for our university. You know, we've had a lot of issues in the past, and this is somewhat of the healing process. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, it's good to see everyone coming out, enjoying themselves, and hopefully the football program can pull it, pull it out. Uh, third and long, that ball's thrown out of bounds, but a penalty flag on the plays. That might keep the drive alive. We'll see. Zach Gallo is going to be the guilty party on this one. Bakari Maxwell, the intended receiver. Obviously, Texas Southern trying to say the ball is uncatchable. But they're not going to get the call. Uh, let's take another look at this one. Well, they're trying to run a double move at the bottom of the field. And I think that was Holden because if he doesn't hold him, it gives him a chance to try to catch the football. Unfortunately, I don't think the Texas Southern defender really knew that the ball was in the air. But still, the rules are the rules. So that's a good call by the refs on that one, a bad break for TSU. Charles, I want to ask you another question about your program. And, and, and if Texas Southern can make it to Birmingham for the SWAC championship game, just what that would mean for this program, which hasn't won a SWAC championship since 1968. It would mean the world to this program. When you talk about a football program that hasn't won anything since 1968, to be able to make it to the SWAC championship game and have an opportunity to compete at that highest level. Uh, this entire city has rallied behind Texas Southern and they'll follow us to Birmingham for that uh, game as well. Now, Charles, of course, you were at Prairie View a couple years ago. And in Prairie View, <laughs> after all of the losing in the 80s and 90s, they win a SWAC title last year. I mean, does that put extra pressure on you only 50 miles away? Well, uh, tremendous pressure. And, you know, <laughs> I had to help build that team and then watch them go to the championship right. <laughs> after beating me here at Texas Southern. It was tough. But I tell you, Henry Frazier, an excellent coach, Prairie View. A great program and what we talked about was having a strong preview in Texas Southern where the SWAT has to come through Texas and we're well on our way to doing it. Back to back sacks by Dewan Fulgham and it'll be third down and extremely long. Dewan Fulgham one of the leaders on this defense. Yeah, and Fulgham one of the most underrated players in the conference the last couple years he's been at the top of his game you can see now He's taking over the ball game with the back-to-back -back sacks, making big plays. He does it all from that middle linebacker position for this defense. Charles, we know you want to enjoy the game. We're going to let you get out. Thank you so much for the time. Best of luck and congratulations on what you've been able to accomplish. Right. Thanks for having me. All right, Charles McClellan, the athletics director for Texas Southern. And uh, right now, his Tigers down to the Grambling Tigers, 24-17. Coming up on two and a half minutes left to go in the first half. Third down and 17 and dropped off the hands of 15 Kiari Thompson. And Grambling will have to punt it away. Zach Gallo was on the coverage. In Grambling State, that's exactly what you needed. You got a couple of first downs. You took some shots deep. You hear this ball. Just a little overthrown. The receiver can't quite get to it, but hey, you're playing good defense. There's nothing wrong with punting. There's two minutes left in the ball game. Make Texas Southern drive the ball 80 yards and see if Arvell Nelson can run a two-minute drill, and maybe you can get another turnover if you're grambling. So on fourth and 17, 
Grambling will punt it away. Jerry's got to look out for William Osborne. But first, a penalty flag. But that man, George McCollum, he's been busy. He's already breaking a sweat. Right. I mean, he, he's had to call a lot of things so far tonight. Well, it's a pretty humid night down here in Texas, so we're going to give him a break. But he's, <laughs> he's working hard. But these guys are playing so hard, you're going to have some penalties when two teams, they realize what's at stake. They both want to win this game and, and have control of their season to try to get to that SWAC championship game. William Osborne, they call him the deuce. Not going to have much room to maneuver. And he's wrapped up behind the 20. They've really bottled him up so far tonight. Terry McGill was all over him after a 40-yard punt. And if you're grambling, that's what you want to do to a talented guy like that. Push all the way to him and don't let him get started. Coming up at the half, we will preview the weekend of the Southeastern Conference. It's a big one, especially that one down in Gainesville. We'll take a listen and a look at the Grambling State Marching Band as well as the Texas Southern Marching Band. So stay tuned for that. You won't want to miss those groups get together. It's always a good time, very entertaining. Well, you and I already had a sneak preview of that Texas Southern Band. We were right there for the open. Penalty flags all over the place as this play is blown up in a hurry. Holding penalty on Texas Southern. You know, you see Johnny Cole there, and I, I want to complete a thought that we talked about earlier. And that he talked about the fact that you know, throughout his coaching career, he's had that wide open passing attack, throw, 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 big plays, the hobo offense. He said, you know, I, I had to retrain myself. Right. He said, I really thought if we were going to be the best team we could be this year, I had to not scrap it entirely, but certainly alter it to the point where this was more of a running team that would rely on that outstanding defense and a lot of coaches won't do that Eddie but Johnny Cole has done that and Texas Southern has been the benefactor because of it. Well and that's the signs of a good coach. I mean, you have to coach to the players you have. So many coaches complain about the players they don't have but just coach the guys you do have. If they run the football well hey that's what you need to do. First and 20 and the ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Texas Southern, I mean, they have to be careful in this portion of the field. I mean, you don't want to go down more than a touchdown in this ball game. So, hey, if you have to just run a draw, run a quick screen, something simple, just to make sure that you get a completion, you want to keep that clock moving to make sure that Grambling State doesn't get a chance to put more points on the board if you're forced to punt. Now keep in mind, Grambling has all three of its timeouts left, so a minute 50 on the clock, but Bramley could really extend this first half if they need to. Nelson, who started off the game red hot, completed his first five passes, but since then he has really cooled down. Nelson with a couple of key picks and uh, five out of his last ten through the air. I can't tell if this is the busted play. It looked like he was trying to fake it and smart on his part. I mean, he realized that you know, I couldn't get the option to pass it. Just take and get what you can get. And now you're in a third down situation in Grambling State and Coach Broadway. I mean, he's thinking points. He's playing aggressive. He calls the timeout, realizing if they can stop Texas Southern on this third and long, they should have pretty good field position to try to get one more score on the board before the half. Mike Morgan, Eddie Robinson with you here in Houston, Texas, Del Mar Stadium, a SWAC showdown. The winner of this quite possibly will be in the SWAC championship game or at least have the inside track in the story thus far. Oh, a lot of turnovers. Grambling taking advantage of it. Two Texas Southern turnovers turning into points. And Texas Southern with two offensive touchdowns and three points off of three Grambling turnovers. So five turnovers in the first half. There have been some great plays and then there have been some sloppy plays. We've had a little bit of everything in this first half. Yeah, and big plays on special teams also. That'll be well short of a first down, and Grambling will use another timeout. So Grambling now with one timeout left. Deshaun Daniels with the reception, but it's going to be third down and long. 
make it fourth down now and 11. Let's take a look at the standings now in the SWAC. Well, you know, in the East, obviously Alabama State, Jackson State, the inside track there, but the two teams that have really been the toast of the league this season are showcased here tonight in Grambling and Texas Southern. Of course, uh, Grambling has yet to lose a game in conference. Texas Southern won early loss, but obviously if Texas Southern could pull it off here, they would have the tiebreaker and would control their own destiny. So uh, the Western Division, really whoever comes out of it is going to be the favorite to win the SWAC in that championship game. One of these two teams will be playing in Birmingham, and that's what's on the line right now. This is a terrible punt. Goes out of bounds, and Grambling is going to have some really good field position. EJ4 kicked that one right off the side of the foot. And this Texas Southern crowd has been pretty quiet the last couple minutes. All the momentum is on the Grambling State side of the football field. So we'll see if that defense, the 212-degree defense, can step up and make some big plays as Grambling will come onto the field in great field position. Yeah, the, the defense is not quite simmering just yet, Eddie. It's, <laughs> you know, it came in red hot. I mean, look at these numbers. These are national rankings, folks. How about 3.8 sacks a game? That's unheard of. Tackles for loss, nearly 10. 213 total yards a game, but uh, I don't think we've seen the boil yet. Not yet. They're getting it. They're going to try to turn on the percolator in just a second. <laughs> First down, Grambling's got a good opportunity to stretch the lead. Another penalty flag, and looked like the umpire threw it. I think this is going to be a holding. The umpire is Homer Williams. First Having a little issue with George McCollum's microphone. I apologize for that, but it is indeed a holding penalty that'll back him up. Well, Frank Warren, you see number 23, he needed 53 yards for the Grambling School record. He's got 42 tonight, so he's nine yards away. I beg your pardon, 11 yards away from becoming the all-time leading rusher in school history. He's got a chance to break some more records. He's got a chance to be the all-time rusher in the history of the SWAT. Pass play complete near the 40, but he stayed in bounds. Probably would like to have that one back. That's Bakari Maxwell. So the clock continues to tick down. You can see the pressure forcing the throw. That's Fulgham. He had two sacks on the last drive, and we'll see if this 212-degree defense gets more aggressive. Carruthers running for his life. Another penalty. This one's coming back. And you can't blame Anthony Carruthers. He did everything he could out of that play, but could be another holding penalty here. And now it looks like there are two flags, one at the 40 and one at the 24. Penalty will be declined. Holding. Offense. Penalty will be enforced. Ten yards from the clear spot. Replay. Second down. They might have gotten the left guard there, Charvo Lampton, on the hold. Each team now with six penalties on the night, and that is in addition to the turnovers, so... If you coach Rod Broadway, I think if he sees one more holding penalty, <laughs> he's going to take a knee and just <laughs> milk this seven-point lead and say, we'll play ball in the third quarter. Well, they're, they're gaining yardage. The problem is for Grambling, it, it's the wrong way. Right. And they're going backwards here. And this Texas Southern defense, I mean, they have 15 interceptions, nine fumbles. I mean, they make big plays defensively. You don't want to make a mistake if you're Grambling State and give up easy points at the end of this half. On second and 20. Caught inside the 40. And that is Mario Lewis. Now, Grambling's got a timeout, not electing to use it here. Third down and along. Caught about nine. Carruthers, home run ball. Incomplete. And another penalty flag. This one coming in late from the back judge. And we might have a pass interference. 
Derrickus Purdy was on the coverage. Guarding Mario Lewis. I like the aggressiveness of the Brampton State offense. They're taking a shot deep. Couldn't see where the pass interference was if that was indeed the call. Mm, I don't know. Uh, that's a very tough call. And the back judge threw that from the middle of the field. The side judge didn't make a call on it. The field judge. I think he might have missed that one. You, you bring up the best point of all. The guy that was closest to the play did not throw the flag. So a big break there. Now rambling either in field goal range or right around it. On first down. Brothers wisely goes down at the 14 yard line and Grambling will use its final timeout with 5.7 on the clock. That's a great job by Carruthers, the freshman quarterback. Broadway, he talked about how he has to make big plays in this game using his legs, understand the situation. We're trying to get a field goal. When we have five seconds left in the half, I don't have to do anything spectacular. I can't score a touchdown on this play. Go ahead, take a knee, protect the football, get the timeout, you have one in the bank, and just come out here and try to attempt the football and try to attempt the field goal and tack on three more points. He's playing with a really good football IQ and is pushing the right button so far offensively for Grambling. And again, only a freshman. Rod Broadway told us, said, look, Anthony Carruthers, he's got to protect the football for us to win. So far, he's done a good job of it tonight. This will be from 30. And Texas Southern might ice him here with a timeout just before the snap. Well, what's at stake tonight in this ball game for these two teams? For one team, it's history in Texas Southern if they can combo this with a victory next week against Arkansas Pine Bluff for Grambling. It's it's really simple. Win this ball game and they're in. They're going back for another championship attempt. They've already got a handful since 2000 so a chance to make it uh, six here since 2000 it would be the second one under head coach Rod Broadway in Texas Southern I mean they have never won an outright swag title they've shared it 42 years ago back in 68 so I mean Grambling is a team that has been here and done it Texas Southern the new kid on the block trying to make big plays to win <laughs> to get themselves an opportunity to make it to the championship game and that right, we're going to ice the kicker just a, a little bit longer. <laughs> well, Johnny Cole's a big believer. You can't take him into the locker room. So right. he's going to burn all three of those timeouts. <laughs> this will be the most highly anticipated field goal of Zoltan Riazzo's career. 24 to 17 our score and obviously Johnny Cole wants to keep this a one possession game going into the second half. Well, it's the heart of college football season, and it's also the start of college basketball. ESPN's College Hoops tip-off marathon is back. That means 24 consecutive hours of live college basketball, 21 game tips off in the case, as the case may be, following Monday Night Football on ESPN. Kick is on the way, and just inside the upright, it is good, so Grambling with a big break before the half, extending the lead to 10, 27 to 17, a five-play drive, 26 yards, a minute 27 off the clock, and Johnny Cole's group going to have to draw some things up for the second half. When we come back, we'll listen on both the Grambling State and Texas Southern bands, but first, Ryan Burr and Trevor Maddich will take a look at this coming weekend in the SCC after these messages. A very entertaining first half here in Houston, Texas. Grambling leading Texas Southern 27 to 17. And now let's take a look and a listen to the world famed Tiger Marching Band from Grambling.
women who have served our Twenty-seven to seventeen, our score. The Grambling Band has concluded. Texas Southern's band coming up next. Well, you just heard from the world-famed Tiger Marching Band of Grambling. With 27-17, our halftime score. It's time to hear from the Ocean of the Soul Band from Texas Southern.
Robert Dvorkin, the founder of Consolidated Credit. For almost two decades, Consolidated Credit has helped millions of get out of debt fast. When credit card debt is the problem, we're the solution. We've helped over five million people. Let us help you. You're one call away from financial freedom. Call Consolidated Credit now. 1-800-350-1303. 1-800-350-1303. With just two races to go, there's a new sheriff in the chase, boys. Denny Hamlin took the points lead from the champ and has the cup in his sights. Now's your chance to drop the hammer, Denny. You've got the 48 on the ropes. But don't count Jimmy Johnson out, because this is going to be a knockdown, dragout fight to the finish. The chase continues with the Cobalt Tools 500 at Phoenix, Sunday at 3 Eastern on ESPN. to the swamp where the Gamecocks and Gators rumble for a spot in the SEC championship game. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. South Carolina, Florida, Saturday at 7.15 Eastern on ESPN. College football lives here. Game time, watch and see who gonna get a victory. It's game time, watch and see who gonna get a victory. Watch and see who's gonna get a victory. We up and get up and get up. You know what's up. Game time. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of college football presented by McDonald's. Mike Morgan, Eddie Robinson with you here in Houston. Our score grambling and an exciting first half leading Texas Southern 27 to 17. We saw a little bit of everything in that first half. And, you know, Eddie, when we talked to Rod Broadway earlier in the week, he said the team that makes the fewest turnovers is going to win this game. The fewest mistakes as well. But we saw four turnovers and a ton of penalties in the first half. Well, both teams have made mistakes with turn returning over the football. But grambling, they were able to get the intercept interception for a touchdown here early on the muff punt TSU takes advantage then the freshman hanging one up in the middle of the field Texas Southern gets the interception but the big play Arbel Nelson once again gives it right back to Texas Southern you can kind of see the theme here we're going back and forth but I think this is the difference the interception for the touchdown by Will Height gives Grambling an advantage and then they score on the special teams play when you can make an interception return for a touchdown score on defense then you come back with Edward Patterson scoring on special teams as 14 points that Grambling has been able to put on the board without scoring on Texas Southern's very talented defense. Well, it was a first half of big plays. What, what some weird numbers we've got here. Time of possession, Texas Southern is killing Grambling in that department. Grambling has 27 points on just six first downs. I don't think I've ever seen that before. And I think what's surprising, Eddie, is that only 52 yards rushing for Grambling in that first half. Well, they've been, they haven't really been on the football field. Texas Southern has been controlling the clock. Grambling would love to run the football, but they're scoring in other ways. And the biggest thing that we need to look at is the 27-17 in favor of the G-Men. And that's the only stat that Broadway cares about right now. We thought this could be a low-scoring defensive game. Uh, this just in, we were entirely wrong. And, and there is Rod Broadway, the head coach of Grambling, who talked about the team making the fewest mistakes winning the game. Well, you know, right now, each team's got two turnovers. One team has six penalties. The other one has seven. So uh, there's still plenty of time for somebody to create some distance in that mistake category and the team that does that will likely win the game. Well, I think the sense of urgency has to be there for Texas Southern. This is a very important drive to start off this third quarter. I don't think they need to panic and go back to passing it every play. Just keep running your offense. You're doing a great job running the football. Mix it up, run pass. You get one touchdown or field goal and you're right back in the football game. A little bit of everything in the first half in terms of big plays and mistakes. We'll see if both categories calm down a little bit in the final 30 minutes of this ball game. Texas Southern trailing by 10. They'll get the football first. A pair of Tigers in this matchup. One from Grambling and one here, the hometown team in Houston. Texas Southern trying to make it to their first SWAC championship game ever and trying to win their first SWAC title 
since 1968 when Lyndon Johnson was in office. <laughs> I'll give you an idea of just how long ago we're talking about. This is Osborne. He's been relatively quiet tonight, and he's bottled up there at the 20-yard line. That's a guy that they rely on for big plays in the kicking game, but so far he's been held in check. And I felt like Osborne needed to do something big in the kicking game to put some points on the board in a big way for Texas Southern. But the big play in the kicking game went to Grambling State, and that's the difference in the score in this ball game. So the Texas Southern offense onto the field. Arvell Nelson was a very busy man in that first half, but he threw two key interceptions in addition to some of the great plays. He ran for 85 yards, threw for another 38. On first down to the ground and a good hole between the tackles out near the 25 yard line. And his 23 Marcus Wright brought down by Bruna Foster. It's another one of those pad popping hits that we could hear up here. There's been a lot of big hitting going on in this ball game tonight. Oh, and that's that's not good because that's the, the linebacker Cliff Eczema, the guy that's been all over the football field for Grambling State. And it will be hard pressed to try to replace him in the lineup he, if he's unable to continue to play. Second in the swag in total tackles. A junior out of North Miami Beach. He's been all over the field tonight. Rod Broadway very concerned as we take another look at what happened to number 50 on this play. Oh boy. That one's tough to look at. Obviously that left leg. And wow, how about this? The fact that he's already up and even with help getting off the field. I don't know if we're going to see him again tonight, but at least he's able to walk off on a very scary looking play for the top tackler on the team, Cliff Exima. Remember now they already lost Christian Anthony mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year. He was all world the SWAC defensive player of the year. He led them in almost every category and in the preseason he started to feel some tightness in his chest turned out to be a heart attack and uh, Christian Anthony's career is over and that was a big blow for rambling to have to deal with early on. Don't know how many more guys they can afford to lose off that defense. Well, one thing you, you have to realize is that Texas Southern, I mean, they want to run the football. Even though they're down by 10, they feel like they can run the football to get back into the ball game. So if you take a Cliff Exma out of the ball game with the first half that he's played, I mean, the backup has to really step up and make those plays that he was making early on. Texas Southern just two of nine on third down. This is third and short, lowering the shoulder. Arbel Nelson taking a lick. And official saying first down. It was right at the 31, which is where the marker is. Arbel Nelson with the old Walter Payton high kick before he sets him up, <laughs> lowering the shoulder. I like that. See so the little high kick there, and you finish him off by getting that first down. <laughs> uh, Bruna Foster wouldn't have any of that. He's, Bruna Foster, number three, has been delivering some shots here tonight. He's a junior out of Ormond Beach, Florida. Well, you know, we talk about the Texas Southern defense and all the accolades and, and the great players they have. And, you know, we talked to Coach Broadway about this Grambling State defense. They don't have the, you know, the, the great player, maybe the All-America player, but they have a lot of good players who are playing at a high level, and they play really good together as a group. On second down. Last play. That is William Osborne. He's been relatively quiet tonight, but a guy you always have to be aware of. And that'll move the chains again. Texas Will Osborne, Southern. he's quick as a hiccup, and this guy, you don't want to let him get out of your sight if you're Grambling State. Back to the ground. Lowering the shoulder and staggering forward is Marcus Wright, Derek Wilhite on the tackle. I really like the pace that Johnny Cole is calling the football game. He's not giving Grambling State a chance to sub. I mean, they're subbing their personnel in and out, but by lining up on the line of scrimmage, you're forcing the defense to stay with their same personnel, and you can dictate the matchup that you want, whether it's in the running game or the passing game. Fifth play of the drive. Second down and four. Daniels the lone back and another penalty. We saw 13 of the 
offense. Number six, five yards, three play, second down. 13 penalties in the first half. There's number 14, Skyler Trimble out of Yakima, Washington. Yeah, and you can't have that because you're, you're sitting at a second and four. You had a good first down play. You're sitting at second and four. You, you ran five or six, seven offensive plays, good continuity, good flow, and you get a guy that jumps offside. Now the defensive team can substitute. They can make changes and regroup when you have that guy that jumps offside in that situation. On second and nine, delayed handoff. Penalty flag is right, bangs his way to the first down, but this one could be coming back. He's out across the 50 to the 43 yard line. There's a penalty. These offenses just keep getting in their, mm -hmm. their own way. Yep. Two steps forward, two steps back. And sometimes we're real critical of the offensive players when they have holding calls and jump offside and those type of things. But you have to give credit to the defense because they forced those penalties. When I'm beating you around the corner because I'm so fast, you have no choice but to hold me. So sometimes the defensive players put those offensive linemen in position where they can't do anything but try to hold. Texas Southern has plenty of beef on that offensive line. Rambling speed right now. Keeping them on edge. Again, Nelson on the run. More of that high step, and he keeps taking shots. It's almost as if he wants the contact. Derek Wilhite delivering the blow on that one. Well, Nelson is a high-energy guy, and I, I saw some clips on him this week as he pumps fakes and takes off running. He said he dreamt about this game. You know, he, he played this game in his head over and over, and he realized the importance of this game in the Texas Southern football history and, and you know you have these opportunities as a player they only come once not many people can say that they've won the championship at any level when you get an opportunity you have to take full advantage of it this is third and 18 they got them stacked at the top of your screen throw over the middle that's incomplete and in the middle of three white jerseys so Texas Southern with the penalties really killing that drive they were moving the football well but it will stall and the punting unit back on the field in Texas Southern they can't get into these third and long situations I mean, Arvell Nelson he's good when it's third and short managing the football game but the penalty the offsides then the 10 yard holding penalty now you get into a third and 15 third and 20 and that's really not what they're about at this point in their football as their offense, the way they're running things. Thompson signaling fair catch and then lets it bounce right in front of him. That came dangerously close to hitting him. And it rolls Den at the 33 yard line. 10 45 remaining in the third quarter. It's Grambling still on top. And we want to remind everybody to join ESPN in support of our troops, wounded warriors, and their families. Donate $10 by texting USO to 27722 or go to USO.org. And we've got a, a military connection here. Dewan Fogelman, we've talked about, one of the leaders of that Texas Southern defense. His dad is in Iraq and uh, certainly He's got his father on his mind and his sister as well. And no doubt they are tuning in tonight to this ball game as Warren runs out of bounds. Here's a picture of Dewan Fulgham's father with the jersey from his son out there in Iraq and no doubt tries to watch whenever he can. And, and also his sister, Dewan's sister in the Air Force. So. Uh, this family with a great military background. They've done uh, so much for our country, and uh, obviously kudos to them, and, and kudos to Dewan Fogelman, who uh, not only is a great player, but a great young man. Yeah, great story for Texas Southern. He's been around for a couple years, two sacks tonight. And first down, Warren. Well, he has really been bottled up tonight. We've talked so much about the numbers and the potential records, but it might be a while before he gets it just 51 yards on 20 carries. But one thing I, I like about Frank Warren when he was interviewed 
and say, hey, what are some of your goals about this year? I mean, granted, he had a chance to be the Grambling all-time leading rusher and the, the SWAC's all-time leading rusher. His first thing he said, I want to win another SWAC championship and another black college national championship, putting the team first. Second along one, waits for a blocker, but great pursuit there. That play strung out by the Texas Southern defense. Curtis Thomas, who's a local kid from Houston, making the play there. Curtis Thomas coming up from that strong safety position. And this is the point of the game where you can see that Frank Warren will try to take over a football game. In that fourth quarter, one of the goals was that Texas Southern had to tackle Warren late in the football game. He gets better as the game goes on. And with a 10-point lead, I know Coach Broadway is going to give a heavy dose of Frank Warren going down the stretch. This is where that 212-degree defense has to come up big here, right? Third down and nine. For others, under hot pursuit. And goes down a sack for Texas Southern, who came in leading all teams at the FCS level with 3.8 a game. Another one there, and that's a big stop for the Tigers' defense. Yeah, pressure coming from everywhere. The little guy, he's he only goes 5'10", and eventually they're going to get him. There's number seven, Marquise Jackson, who's been trying to chase him down all night. And I think that was Shamari Clemens who may have gotten that sack who came into this game with six and a half sacks. And I like about this defense, you have four or five guys with about five sacks apiece. So it's not just one guy, it's a lot of good guys on this defense. Now you can't key on one. They are swarming. Starting to look more like the defense that came in ranked second in the country coming in. That is not a fair catch. Caught at the 15, a fumble, ball on the ground. I can't believe he returned that football. Larry Donald, in on the play, a 44-yard punt. And we could have another turnover as they're healing off bodies one by one. And it's a scramble on the lead, and the referee did throw down his beanbag, so we'll see what the call is. In Texas Southern, no one has used the fair catch signal tonight. Everyone's... <laughs> It was Richard Samuel on the return, Texas and boy, Southern. I tell you what, Texas Southern dodged a bullet. Yeah. Dodged a major bullet. You're already down 10 points. You turn it over there, you've gift wrapped it more points for Grambling. Another look at what almost was our fifth turnover of the night. Texas Southern will have the ball when we come back. Steve Spurrier. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. It's a beautiful night in downtown Houston. We're about 5, 10 miles away from the heart of downtown Houston. It is Del Mar Stadium, rambling in Texas Southern in a SWAC battle. 27-17 hour score with Eddie Robinson. I'm Mike Morgan. Very entertaining first half. Things have settled down a little bit here in the third quarter. Each team with a drive that's stalled. Now let's see what Texas Southern has up its sleeve. Probing the right side is Marcus Wright. And that is quickly stiffed out by Derek Wilhite, who's been all over the place tonight for that grambling defense. Texas Southern doing a good job of controlling this second half, running the football, but at some point, you think they're going to have to get a, a big 30 or 40-yard play. They're going to need a guy to step up and make a big play as we see an injured Grambling Tiger on the football field. That's Jamarcus Savage, defensive tackle out of Huntsville, Alabama. Let's take a look at the road ahead brought to you by Lexus, Texas Southern. Again, next week, that could be a huge one against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Grambling will take on Southern on November 27th. That is always a huge ball game. And then, of course, the SWAC championship game on December the 11th. They started that in 1999, and, and Grambling has really owned it since the inception. They have already won five titles, and they're trying to go after number six. Again, Texas Southern going after history. Second down and seven. Nelson. Nelson is helicoptered down at the 30-yard line, but a nice tough run by Arvell Nelson. 
Well, you just wonder how much gas is going to be left in the tank for this kid in the fourth quarter. Well, one thing I have to say about Arvell Nelson, he's leaving it on the football field tonight. Yeah, he's had some mistakes. He's thrown the interception for a touchdown. and But one thing he's been doing is running the football. He's running it with authority. You know, he's making good decisions in the option game. He just has to control the passes and just complete the easy ones. Just take what they give you. Well, we have a 100-yard rusher in this game, but it's not any of the guys that we thought it might be coming in. It's been the quarterback, Arvell Nelson, 15 carries for 103 yards. As you see, Martin Gilbert on the carry as Texas Southern looks to be going back to the no huddle. And Grambling State, they're going to play good, solid defense. And, and if Texas Southern wants to run the football and work this clock, as long as they limit them to three and four yards at a time, the Grambling State defense can live with that. Wind picking up now, gusting toward the end zone for with the carry. Texas Southern. Another modest gain on the ground. It'll be third down and about four. Third and three. Rushing yards now. Texas Southern leading the way. 206 compared to Grambling's 58. But again, Grambling has had the big plays. The pick six, the special teams return for a touchdown. I still can't get over that stat in the first half. 27 points on six first downs. <laughs> it's unheard of. It's his third, and we'll call it a long three. Well, we might call it longer than that. He has another penalty. You can see the frustration on Arvell Nelson's face. Well, last drive, Texas Southern had the offside call. Then they had the holding penalty. They got into a third and long situation. Now you're in the third and three. Great spots for this football team. You can run your option. You know, your runs are available. Your bootleg, your start pass. Everything is available in your playbook. Then you have a guy jump offside. Now you're back to a third and eight, and you give the advantage back to the defense. That was Jordan Kurt in the tight end. On third, a little skinny post pattern caught. First down yardage, still churning the legs is Joseph Anderson, and a nice play will keep the drive moving for Texas Southern. 20 yards on that pickup. Good decision here by Arvell Nelson. Just a good throw with authority, and I think that's what Arvell Nelson needs. He needs a couple of good completions just to get him going back as far as a passer. He's doing a great job with effort running the football, but he's going to have to do something in the pass game today if Texas Southern is going to pull out a victory. You know, Arvell Nelson, we've talked about how inspired he's been tonight. As we see Marcus right on the carry, and he breaks free into the secondary to the 10 and tripped up at the 5. Longest run of the night for Marcus Wright, 40 yards. There goes that hobo offense running off for diesel fuel. They're running the football here at Texas Southern. That's just a good determined run. You have two or three guys in the hole who has a chance to bring down Marcus Wright. He lowers the shoulder, turns the legs, and gets a big play in a big game for Texas Southern. Dominic Bell saved a touchdown right there. And now Wright is over 100 yards. Play action, jump pass, picked up in the end zone. And this could be all the way into Texas Southern territory, down the sideline, and tripped up inside the five. Bruna Foster, but a penalty flag all the way on the other side of the field. And this will be the biggest penalty flag of the football game. We'll have to see what the call is, but not a good play by Arvell Nelson. He could have run the football in. You can't throw that play in that situation when you're doing so much, so many good things on this drive. I don't know if Bruna Foster is hurt or just thoroughly exhausted. He's out of gas. <laughs> that, that is a long run. He is out of gas. Him and Arvell Nelson are out of gas. So we'll have to see what this call is. Think about it for Bruna Foster. He ran close to 100 yards vertically, and he reversed field about another 50 yards. So uh, that was one heck of a return. 97 yards, again, that's in distance vertically. Trying to go with the 
the jump pass and Bruno Foster's like, hey, Christmas. <laughs> you know, Christmas in November, I'll take it. And he's huffing and puffing and trying to get it there. And that's when the, the monkey comes on his back right there. And, and Arvell Nelson, give this guy credit. He does not quit. He runs him down and goes for the strip. You know, great recovery by Nelson, but you can't make that throw. Looked like he had two guys right there. He could have ran the football in and just go to the pylon and get the easy touchdown. Yeah, it's hard to understand that play. Now, meanwhile, we're still waiting on the call from the officials. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Right, waved off the flag. Oh, boy. So that penalty flag, which is all the way on the other side of the field at the three-yard line, waved off and Johnny Cole wants an explanation on that. Uh, it certainly wasn't any interference there. But that is a huge, huge mistake by Arvell Nelson. But you know, if you're this Texas Southern offense, I mean, you can't, you, you're trying to win a championship and you can't rely on the referee with a flag and, and hope and pray that it's a, a call that's going to go your way. That's just a play that your quarterback can't make. And I'm, I'm sure, I mean, Arvell Nelson has played his heart out in this game. He's played with a with a lot of intensity and courage but at the same time in that play you just can't you just can't do that and that to so going back to the last play on the deep see that there is where they're probably looking at the penalty flag grambling had what was would have been a 12th guy running off the field at the last second now the question becomes well did he, he get off sides but even if he was getting off side off the field on time right if he was still on the field of play he would have been offside so so why do you wave it off mm. that's Gonna be a question that's gonna be around for a while. Meanwhile, up the middle is Frank Warren, stopped short of the goal line. Let's see, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's now there's no doubting there's twelve. That is a big, it's not a no call, they changed the call. Yep. Second and goal from the one. Quarterback plunges in, touchdown. Anthony Carruthers dives into the end zone and Grambling has busted this game open now. A chance to go up 34-17 with an extra point. I mean, that's hard for this defense to come in this situation. I mean, you're on the two yard line and They've been playing their hearts out, and keep in mind, this, this defense, they, they haven't been on the field for these points. There was the interception return for the touchdown, kickoff return for a touchdown. Now you come out, and the ball's on your own two-yard line, but that's 21 points that you can't really give to this Texas Southern defense. A game of turnovers and a huge one there, Grambling on top. With just two races to go, there's a new sheriff in the chase, boys. Denny Hamlin took the points lead from the champ and has the cup in his sights. Now's your chance to drop the hammer, Denny. You've got the 48 on the ropes. But don't count Jimmy Johnson out, because this is going to be a knockdown, drag out fight to the finish. The chase continues with the Cobalt Tools 500 at Phoenix, Sunday at 3 Eastern on ESPN. Joe Paterno. Having to go in the third quarter. It's Grambling on top of Texas Southern 34 to 17. The largest lead of the night for either team. And we'll see if that last turnover was a deflator for Texas Southern, who is trying to make it to their first ever SWAC championship game. That's what's on the line for them. They've got to win this game to have a shot at it and to have a shot at their first SWAC championship since 1968. Grambling, they win this game. They polish off Texas Southern. They're already in. They're going to Birmingham. Osborne from the five. They'll cut back. And a late penalty flag as he is dropped at the 26-yard line. Texas Southern's last four possessions, three punts and the INT. And now a penalty here to start this drive off. 21-yard kickoff return. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, that's going to be a lot of fun Saturday night in the Swamp. ESPN delivers an SEC showdown to Steve. Arvell Nelson, take a look at his numbers. The three interceptions, I mean, that's what you have to circle. Everything else is academic. Those three interceptions, 
One an interception return for a touchdown, and another one ran to the two-yard line. And you remember he had four interceptions in this game last year, and you could say that that was obviously the key number. It's really a shame because he's made some great plays tonight, and you know he's probably been haunted somewhat by those picks last year and, and a three more in this ball game, and that last one really a killer as Texas Southern had it inside the five and a 97-yard interception return by the Danville defense. Off tackle. And that'll gobble up a few more yards. You know, we talked about, Eddie, the keys to the game, your keys, and that key number, quarterback Nelson must protect the yeah, football. Must, must protect the football. And the three interceptions, I mean, that's pretty much the difference in this ball game. If he doesn't throw those picks, if, say if he cuts that down to two, if he just doesn't throw the last one, if they score right there, you can cut this ball game to three points. But you know, he's been progressing. He's been getting better. I mean, the last five games, he's only threw two interceptions. But this game, just a couple plays. He's like that pitcher who's pitching a great game, but the two bad pitchers hiding the strike zone go for home runs. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, he's been playing great. <laughs> well, this, this is a too many people in the huddle penalty, and I don't think this one's going to come back, which is what Johnny Cole would have liked to have seen happen on the Grambling penalty, which turned out to not be a penalty. And Johnny Cole's patience has been tested mightily in this game. He knows his team is good enough, and he knows that they've made enough big plays in this game to win it, but the mistakes have really been much higher than they had hoped for and perhaps can afford. Throw over the middle, and that's off target. Intended for number 81 for Texas Southern. That's Richard Samuel, the junior out of Wimberley, Texas. And that'll bring the punting unit back onto the field. So, you know, at, at this point, Eddie, Texas Southern's defense is going to have to force a turnover here and get some of that momentum back because clearly it's on the side of Grambling now. Yeah, because Grambling State's going to give you a heavy dose of Frank Warren at this point. And to Texas Southern defense, you have to do something, bring extra pressure to try to create a turnover. Fielded at the 49. Up the middle down to the 40. Well, Joe Paterno last week picking up career win. The college football presented by Kate Jewelers on ABC or ESPN at 3.30 Eastern time. A lot of huge games coming down the last few weeks of college football's regular season. The best regular season in all of sports. I don't think many people would argue that. Long pass and incomplete. 15 got tripped up there. That's Kier Thompson. First down play action. Coach Broadway is trying to put the dagger into Texas Southern. Trying to go over the top of the defense and make a big play. Well, I have to tell you what. They were able to get another touchdown. That might be a dagger. I know there's a lot of football to pl be played, but this Grambling defense doesn't typically give up flurries of points, so it will be awfully tough. Cornelius Walker is the deep back. Pass is incomplete. And that was intended for Larry Donald. And I believe we have another penalty flag. A yeah, great attempt to make that catch an incomplete pass, but now a penalty away from the football. Dead ball fall. After the play was over, first the foul, number 70, third down, 15 yard penalty. Well, that's Clint Marsh, the right guard. And gosh, if you're Rod Broadway, you want to talk about a penalty that upsets you as a coach. You're up 34 17, exactly. you're moving the football. And you get a personal foul penalty. And, son, I don't care what he did to you. Whatever he did to you, <laughs> it's no reason for you to get a 15-yard penalty in that situation. There's no excuse you can give your coach in that situation. You're just trying to win this ball game, and you can't have a penalty. You can be a you know, third and 10 instead of third and long. Third and 25 to be exact. They need the 30-yard line. 
This pass is up for grabs, tipped and incomplete. Boy, that was a very dangerous pass. Texas Southern read it all the way. Zach Gallo tipped it, but it falls incomplete. And Grambling State with the three incomplete passes. I mean, this Texas Southern defense, they're doing their job here. They have a chance to make an interception. Is tipping in there, very fortunate for Grambling. So to say, they're giving their offense another chance. I mean, you get three plays off an incomplete pass. You, you barely run any time off the clock. So Grand, I mean, Texas Southern offensively, they have to step up to the plate and make some plays. They need some big plays. They need them right now. Fair catch called for. It's the first time we've seen a fair that catch. Is the first. I was wondering if they knew the signal. They got it there. Osborne says, okay, let's let the offense do some damage here. 39-yard punt, nothing on the return. A minute 54 remaining in the third quarter. Grambling leading 34-17. to 17. On top of the turnovers for Texas Southern, 12 penalties for 115 yards. So it just seems like... Texas Southern keeps shooting itself in the foot. Can't do that any longer. Nelson hands it off. And Marcus Wright is stonewalled near the line. Jacardi Carter has been a busy man tonight. In Texas Southern, I mean, they've converted to a run first team. They're averaging over you know, 180 yards per game, so they really want to pound the football. But when you're down by 17, you're almost forced to speed up the tempo. Even if you have to do it through short passes, you have to complete more passes and hope that one of them can go for a big play. Because I don't think you can just run for three yards, three yards, three yards, and come back in the football game. Nelson takes it himself, and he'll have first down yardage at the 30. And this is pretty much what Nelson has been doing a great job of. You know, he's reading downfield, no one's open. He's tucking the ball and running and moving the chains and getting the first down. But time is, is against you now because you're, you've made so many mistakes earlier on in the ball game. Again on the ground and banging ahead is Marcus Wright. That's about seven, eight yards. Eric Wilhite on the stop. But Grambling's going to give you that now. They, they, the clock is Grambling's ally the rest of the way. Yeah, but if I'm Grambling, I wouldn't just start off the bus. You're going to have to finish this game off. Oh, oh goodness. What a hit by 54, Jacardi Carter. I felt that one up here. I hope there's still a head attached to that neck. That was like rock'em, sock'em robot. You, know, you catch him <laughs> up under the chin and the head pops off and everything just goes everywhere. That was a great hit by 54, Jacardi Carter. Give Marcus Wright credit. He got right back up. Here's Nelson on third and short. Has the marker. Has more inside Grambling territory and out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. Maybe time for one more play in this quarter. Norvell Nelson doing a great job running the football. I mean, he's made great decisions in the running game. Just the interceptions is what's caused him the problem. I thought Texas Southern might rush a play in, but they just let the clock go down. We'll see if Texas Southern can mount a comeback in the fourth quarter coming up. ESPN College Football Primetime, South Carolina, Florida, Saturday at 7.50. And welcome back. Mike Morgan, Eddie Robinson with you here in Houston, Texas, Del Mar Stadium, where Grambling leads 34-17. All right, we're going to put Too man easy. Eddie Robinson Too on the easy. spot, okay? Now, you, of course, you are a swack legend in, in your own right. Exactly. But we've got some big names here. All right, one by one, Michael Strahan. Texas Southern. Oh, boy. Doug Williams. Grambling. Ding again. Walter Payton. Jackson State. Jerry Rice. Mississippi Valley. Mel Blunt. Southern University Hall of Famer. John Stallworth. Alabama A&M. Also Hall of Famer. Steve McNair. He played with me with the Tennessee Titans. I can't miss that. <laughs> that's, that's the layup. <laughs> All Corn State. <laughs> My goodness. I thought you was going to give me like a Paul Tank Younger or a Charlie Joyner or Everson Walls. You know, something to challenge me. How about Ernie Ladd? <laughs> 
Oh, Ernie Ladd, the big cat. Grambling State. Oh, she's too good. <laughs> Teammates with Buck Buchanan, she's, by the oh, way. She, that was my next <laughs> now one. I'm showing off. All right, all right. Here, I'm, going, I'm going off the radar here. I'm going from the gridiron to the hardwood. Willis Reed. Oh, that's Grambling State. Oh, man. Kidding me? All right, I give up. Mix, he comes back. Give, Eddie's just showing off now. I, I thought you might have to cheat on a couple of those. I saw you grabbing the cell phone. I thought nah, maybe, not at all. I thought you guys were going to go a little deeper. You know, right. some Lim Barneys or somebody. You know? <laughs> what about Kenny Burroughs, the big double O from Texas Southern? Oh, look at this. There we go. <laughs> look at this. He's on fire. Let's see if Texas Southern can heat up. Caught inside the 20 and down to the five is Joseph Anderson. That's the first big play in the passing game that Texas Southern has had since the first half. Well, if I'm Johnny Cole, I'm like, get into the end zone. I mean, so many things bad have happened at the five-yard line, but a good job by Arvell Nelson. Nice touch. I mean, this kid just keeps coming back. I love the fight in Arvell Nelson. In spite of the bad plays, he's still pushing forward and making big plays for Texas Southern. Longest pass play of the night for Nelson, 42 yards. First and goal from the five. Texas Southern needs a score badly. Handoff and stuffed. Martin Gilbert running into the 6'2", 286-pound Antoine Rogers. Rogers gave him a good old bear hug. Man, Antoine, he's a big one. You can tell. Look at those scars on the helmet there. That means that's the guy that's battling play after play. No game. Second and goal. Again to the ground. This time it's right. And he is about a yard short. Brought down by Jacardi Carter. So I can just about guarantee you won't see a pass play. <laughs> if I'm Johnny Cole, I'm running it on third down and I'm going to run it again on fourth down. Absolutely. <laughs> this time out of the eye. Nelson plunging in himself. He is shy. So fourth down, you're down 17. You're going to need a field goal eventually, but you got to go for it here, don't you, Eddie? You know, it's tough because if you can cut it to two scores, yeah. in conventional wisdom, it's, it's a tough place to be, but you have so much momentum. Your crowd wants to get going. Your band wants to get back into it. Here's the call right here. 11th play of the drive, fourth down, handoff, up the middle, touchdown, Martin Gilbert, and Texas Southern is right back in the ball game. That was a big time drive for a team that really needed a big time drive. Well, we didn't, we told Grambler not to crank up the bus, if they stopped them right there, they could have crunked up the bus and headed back to Grambler, but some more football to play, over 12 minutes left in this ball game. Now it seems like Texas Southern, with that defense and the way they've been playing, they can grab momentum back on their side once again. And still plenty of time, 12 minutes, 38 seconds. Extra point, perfect. 10 point game. That second ranked Texas Southern defense gonna try to get the offense back when we return. Endless. Now this game continues to get more exciting by the quarter. 34-24 and the momentum starting to swing Texas Southern's way. 12-38 of the night for Texas Southern. 11 plays, 82 yards, 416 off the clock. And still plenty of time in this game. A two-possession game right now, and Texas Southern with that highly touted defense will try to get the ball back for that offense. Some raindrops starting to fall down here on Del Mar Stadium. Kick off field at the 10. And slipping at the 20 yard line is Kenneth Batiste. Well, there is Frank Warren. And Frank Warren is two yards shy of becoming the all time rushing leader in the history of Grambling football. And that's saying something when you consider all the incredibly talented running backs that have come through that program. He's been somewhat quiet tonight. Texas Southern's done a good job holding him in check, but his night is far from over. We've got another. Looks like we've got either another penalty or for some reason they're re-kicking. Oh, 
see what the call is. Okay, again, we apologize for the microphone on George McCullough, the referee tonight. It's been in and out, so what we did not hear but was the call offsides on the kicking team, which you rarely see. A lot of times they just let that go, mm -hmm. but that'll back them up five. Keep in mind that Grambling returned a kickoff for a touchdown in the first half, so this is a point of emphasis for Texas Southern. You have to be able to cover this kick. This time it's a squibber. It's going to be much better field position for Grambling at the 36. O'Shea Hamilton, the fullback, picks it up. All right, now, let, let's see it. Eddie, are we looking at 212 degrees here of defense, or is, it, is the water going to start to boil here? Yeah, I, I think they're getting to that point, and at 212 degrees, you know, water, I was a chemistry major, but, I, you know, that, this is something that Coach, <laughs> Coach Ramsey told me. Water at 211 degrees is still water, but at 200, well, it never changed water, but at 212 degrees, it starts to boil, and that's what they want to do. They want to bring the heat, and they want to boil over. That's what this Texas Southern defense is going to try to do on this series. Here's Warren, left side. Does he get the record? Not on this play. I don't think so. Holgum tripped him up one yard gain so he's a yard short <laughs> there, there it is and, you know Eddie when he's not showing off on his history of swag legends he, he breaks things down literally scientifically at 212 degrees water is hot at 212 it boils and with boiling water comes steam and with steam you can power a train there you go they're trying to keep the championship train moving on to Birmingham <laughs> meanwhile there's a locomotive wearing the number 23 jersey gets the football in the backfield breaks a tackle past the 40 and that should be it Frank Warren becomes the all-time leading rusher at Grambling he needed 53 coming into tonight and he's got more than that. He's all time leading rusher now, 3,804 yards. He's got 10 carries for 58 yards tonight. And one thing is for sure, he's not done. Definitely not. I mean, he just passed Eric Gant, who played from 90 to 94 with Grambling and next. He's only 50 yards behind the second guy in the conference, which is Lewis Tillman, a former Jackson State great. On third down and four. Look at that run. Still on his feet is Carruthers. Carruthers stumbling, rumbling, and inside the 20, down to the 17. That is a huge play by the true freshman quarterback out of Charlotte, North Carolina, 40 yards. Yeah, he just keeps motoring. Everyone has a chance at him, but look at the little guy go. Great block at the end of that play to spring Carruthers for the big game. I mean, they're all around him, but he can make the people miss, and you got to like the heart. They said that he needed to make a big play in the running game tonight for Grambling to be successful. I think that was the play right there. You know, he's 5'10", 180 pounds, and Rod Broadway told us if he was three inches taller, he would have been recruited by everybody in the country. First and 10, Warren again, picks up a couple. Now, I think it's huge for Texas Southern right here. At least hold them to a field goal. Keep them out of the end zone. Have to. Have to. It's paramount. You cannot give up a touchdown. Even though you're in the red zone at this point in the ball game, you hold them to a field goal, you're two scores down. It's a 13-point difference as we have an injured grambling player on the field. Left tackle, Benny Peoples. Well, we mentioned Frank Warren just became the all-time leader in the history of Grambling. Uh, let's take a look at, at that prestigious list. All-time leading rushers in the SWAC now. He is third all-time, right on the heels of Lewis Tillman, and number one, Destry Wright of Jackson State, 4,049 yards. You start doing the quick math there. He's got a chance to do it. Of course, he's already passed Walter Payton. Walter Payton yeah. a couple weeks ago. Brad Baxter, former New York Jet. Mm -hmm. Some pretty impressive names 
on that list. Let's take a look at what Frank Warren has been able to do tonight. Again, started off rather slowly, but he's picked up steam here of late. Yeah, they call him Sweet Feet. You know, we talked, Coach Broadway said, what does he do well? He said, well, he just is an all-around back. He just does everything pretty consistent using the stiff arm. Finish Frank Warren right there, and that's the record breaker. You four or five guys had a chance at him. Play that should have been a three-yard loss on the second down play. He gets him in position by making a couple guys miss, turns it into a positive, sets up a third down so his team can get the first down. Just a great team player, good student, good leader, on and off the football field, good guy in the community. That's the type of guy you want to put out front to be the model for your university. A few years ago, he was the SWAC freshman of the year. A few years later, he's got a chance to be the all-time leading rusher in the history of the conference. Second down and eight. The others. Looking some clock. Is it to Warren still on his feet? He's hard to tackle, folks. That's the one thing that Rod Broadway said. He's not the quickest guy in the world. He's not the biggest. But he's really hard to bring down. But a penalty flag. And it's going back. Rambling. Mm. To put it in reverse on this one. Boy, we have seen Locking a ton back. of penalties. Offense, 75, 10 yards, three spot, three plays, first down. Blocked in the back was the call by big number 75. To the TSU 25 yard line. But look at Warren with the leg drive. That's a, ooh, that was a vicious stiff one. I mean, that's a Walter Payton type stiff arm right there. I mean, Warren is, is one of those guys, each year he's gotten a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. Now you look at his body of work it, over his four year career, and it could be one of the best in the conference running the football. That last penalty, the 21st penalty of the night. Carruthers going for the end zone and almost intercepted. Boy, that would have been a big pick. In and out of the hands of Derrickus Purdy. Play action trying to go over the top. Almost a one hand interception, which could have preserved the field goal attempt by Grambling. We'll see in this situation, a lot of defenses like to bring pressure. If you can get a sack, you can knock them out of field goal range. So we'll see if, if Texas Southern, because they're down 10, has that sense of urgency to say we got to make a big play defensively and not just try and stop them. I think Texas Southern would love to see Grambling throw the football the rest of the night. Yep. The incomplete pass, but that does too, is it stops the clock. And uh, that's secondary for Texas Southern. Very opportunistic. They've got <coughs> interceptions all over the place. Purdy, Thomas, Thomas, and Gallo. And a timeout on the field. A third down and 18 is what Rod Broadway and company are looking at. We'll see if they can convert when we come back. Introducing Listerine Zero. We removed the alcohol and made it less intense. Now people everywhere are getting a deep clean and fresher mouth without the intensity that kept them away. It still kills bad breath germs for a whole mouth clean. But it's never felt so good. New Listerine Zero. Deep clean, less intense. A Listerine clean for all. Week 10, Eagles Redskins. Donovan McNabb gets another shot at his old team. But Michael Vick is back, and with a huge win over the Colts, the Eagles are in hot pursuit of the division lead. I don't know, Jaws, McNabb and the Skins will be looking for another big win against their rivals. This time, it's in their house. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. 34-24, Grambling leading Texas Southern and looking for more. Third down and 18. The Texas Southern defense needs a stop. They bring the blitz. The pass is complete and immediately brought down by 44, Dewan Fulgham. Kier Thompson on the reception. Great job of reaction by Texas Southern. This play looks like it can go big. You see the big offensive lineman out front, but Fulgham, great job of blitzing then retracing your steps, giving the effort to get out to the sideline and still make that tackle on the perimeter of the defense. 
So that is a big stop. Even if this field goal is good, it's still a two score game. With a lot of time on the clock. Riazzo. High snap. Riazzo picks it up. Going backwards. There's a little lateral. And Texas Southern's going to have the football with great field position. That's a big time break for the Texas Southern Tigers. Well, both coaches talked about the teams that made the fewest mistakes. And I know Coach Broadway is upset after that play, but I, I mean, that thing could have been even worse because here he gets it and he tosses it. You should have just took a knee. I mean, just go on and take a knee. Give the ball to the other team. Your defense is playing well, but that snap was terrible. I don't think the holder had a chance. It hit him on the G on the <laughs> side of the helmet. <laughs> Fabian Carter, who's the punter, is the holder on that. And like you said, he had no prayer. And there's a big run. Look out. Marcus Wright with a head of steam. Down the field, inside the 30. And to the 25. Yeah, great job blocking. Look at the big guy. Number 62, turning it up in there, getting the pressure. That was big Fred Gaines, number 62, and he threw the block that sprung him. And, hey, the big guy's getting excited. You like that. You got to like that. You see the big guys coming around the corner and leading up in there. It's getting cool now in the fourth quarter. This is when they like to start blocking for real. 26 yards on that scamper, a timeout on the field called by Grambling. 8.16 on the clock, a load of time. While we have a moment, let's take a look at some of the action from halftime brought to you by McDonald's. Well, the bands stealing the show as they always do here in the SWAC. <laughs> I don't know, they, they, you know, after they, each performance, the PA <laughs> asked who, who won. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I wouldn't want to be the guy that makes that vote. It's always tough. I mean, these bands in the SWAC conference are all so very good. That was tonight's McDonald's bringing the flavor. Some more of the Texas Southern Band. Yeah, the Ocean of Soul. I like that name. You got to put motion in your ocean. <laughs> <laughs> so first down, the ball spot on the 25 of Grambling. Arvell Nelson with three interceptions trying to lead his team. He's a senior. This game means a lot to him, no question. Texas Southern has to win to still have a chance at the SWAC championship game in a couple of weeks in Birmingham. And keep in mind, being Grambling has a couple injuries. That was number 59, Derek Johnson, the starting middle linebacker who was just injured earlier. We saw Cliff Exima who left the ball game after having a great day. And so they're kind of getting thin at the linebacker position. And just when things are going right, the ball hits the ground on a routine play, and that makes it third and long. You know, you and I talked about this, Eddie, uh, 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 with all the numbers surrounding these two teams and, and, and so many positive ones. Turnover margin, I couldn't believe when I read this. Texas Southern, dead last in the league, minus seven. The minus seven. But early in the year, they were terrible at the turnovers. They started to correct that the last couple of games, but now it's back. On third and nine. Nelson going to the end zone. Man, wide open. Leaping catch. Touchdown. Oh, my goodness. What a grab by Richard Samuel. 24 yards. And it's a one possession game. What about Arvell Nelson? I mean, this kid has had his troubles, his ups and downs, but he puts one out there, and what a great over-the-shoulder catch. He looks it all the way in. He doesn't bobble it, doesn't juggle it. That is just a phenomenal catch. I to make that one in that situation. I think we might see that one on Sports Center. Extra point is knocked through. And how about this? Down 17, Texas Southern has made it a one possession game. Stick around, plenty coming up from Houston. Any 
The momentum has gone back and forth, <laughs> shifting one way and another, and it is clearly on the side of Texas Southern right now. 34-31, a three-point game. What's at stake? Well, everything, if you're Texas Southern, you almost have to win this game to have any chance. If you win it, you're in the driver's seat for the SWAC championship game. Grambling, all they've got to do is hold on. They once led by 17, now just up by three. But if they win, they're going to yet another SWAC championship game. This would mean so much for Texas Southern, as we've talked about. They have not made it to a SWAC championship game. They have not won the SWAC since 1968 when they shared the title. Good return here off another squib kick. Waddell Pippen picking up that ball, and Anthony Carruthers will come back out. Just a freshman, but he's growing up in a hurry in this ball game. Keep in mind, this was a kid that didn't start, didn't, didn't have any spring ball, so he came out there in the fall, and they said after 10 days, he was our guy. So he showed that leadership ability early on. Now they're going to have to get him to make a couple of plays, not just throwing the football, but also running it. So if he can make some plays running the football, just get a couple first downs. That's all you want to do if you're Graham. If you score, that's even better. But you just want to get a couple first downs to slow down this Texas Southern offense. Now the Texas Southern defense has been energized, and so too has this crowd. On first down, devoured in the backfield. Nowhere to run a bunch of maroon jerseys swallowing up Frank Warren. Yeah, these guys are just this is a run blitz right here. Guys are just coming downhill. Keep in mind, they lead the FCS in tackles for loss per game. So they're going to be aggressive. You're going to see man coverage on the outside, and they're going to dare you to run the football. 45, Jerome Thomas leading the way. A loss on the play. It's second and 11. He has started to drizzle a little bit out here. It's, it's getting kind of cool, but... You know, these Houston fans have been waiting 42 years. That's right. <laughs> 42 years for a SWAC championship. I don't think they're going anywhere. I don't think so either. On second and long, and a whistle stops that play. Otherwise, Anthony Carruthers was about to be buried. Whistle back rambling up five more. You talk about the 212 degree defense. I think they're at around 230 or so right now. I mean, the temperature has definitely risen. And, I mean, give Coach Ramsey a lot of credit, the defensive coordinator for Texas Southern. I mean, he's called a good ball game tonight. He has 34 points on the board, but trust me, it's not because of bad defensive play. A lot of other things have caused those points, but defensively, I mean, the Tigers have played great all season and again tonight. Well, bottom line, they've held Grambling to eight first downs yep. the entire game. When's the last time you saw a team score 34? And eight first downs. On eight first downs. <laughs> so they've done their job for the most part, but they need a big stop here on second and 16, another penalty. And right now, Grambling losing its poise. Yeah. Big time. False start. Offense. Number 79. Five yards. Replay. Second down. That's Aaron Jackson, the left tackle. You say what makes a kid jump offside? I mean, it's that 212 degree defense. I mean, they're bringing the heat. I mean, he's trying to block 92. Big Burtis. And those guys are coming off the corner now. Second down and 21. Plenty of time in this game. Carruthers, the freshman, working out of the shotgun. They've got faith in the pass. Scrambling, throwing, and almost intercepted. Jumping that route was Derrickus Purdy. I'm not so sure if I'm grambling in this situation. I just run it, punt the football, trust my defense to make a play. Dangerous Great pass. break on the ball. Yeah. Purdy, man, you got to like that guy. He's, he's not thinking make a tackle. He's thinking interception. He's Defe trying to get the ball back right now. <laughs> Defensive coordinator Kevin Ramsey said Derek is Purdy reminds him of Terry Fair, who he coached when he was an assistant at Tennessee. That's pretty high praise. Absolutely. He was a good one. Now third and 21. Texas Southern rushing just four. Carruthers spins out of trouble, but then is wrapped up at the 32. And Grambling will have to punt it away. Shamari Clemens with the tackle. It came into the game with six and a half sacks here. The young freshman trying to make something happen. Just too many athletes on his Texas Southern defense. And now you have Will Osborne 
back there to return this football. We'll see if they can't make a big play in the return game. Grambling just have to settle down, get off a good punt, and trust your defense to come on here and make some plays for you. Now the defense percolating about 300 degrees. Yeah, it's, up that drive. it's up there. It's up there. Osborne, the reigning special teams player of the week. He's not going to get it, though. They kick it away from him and a fair catch at the 36 yard line. Want to remind everybody Saturday afternoon, ABC and ESPN from Joe Paterno's 400th win on the road against Terrell Pryor at um, an Ohio State college football presented by K Jewelers on ABC or ESPN at 3.30 Eastern time. First and 10. 4.23 on the clock. Texas Southern has all three of its timeouts. Plenty of time. Now you just got to move the football. Not there. Jamarcus Savage blows that one up. There's the 400 win club. Joe Paterno at 400. Eddie Robinson, the grambling legend at 408. John Gagliardi working St. John's at the Division, Division III school at 477. He's still going. That's St. John's of Minnesota, of course, not the Big East program. Good pass out to the near side. And across the 40 is Joseph Anderson, a gain of about four. Well, Eddie, what are we looking for here out of the Texas Southern offense? What's the go-to play if they have one? Well, I think you're going to try to do one of those quick slants that has been somewhat successful early on in the football game. But, I mean, Arvell Nelson, he's done a great job of running the football. So when he drops back to pass, if no one's open, trust me, he's going to take off and try to control this himself and get the first down. A critical third and seven. Here's the blitz. Quick toss complete. And that's a first down. And then some by Joseph Anderson, who refuses to go down. Big play for this Texas Southern offense. Joseph Anderson, he put up nine touchdowns last year, and you like the effort. He goes 6'1", 195. He's a big one out there at the wideout position, and you're going to have to tackle him. You're going to have to press bail and not just let him have that throw and catch because he's a hard guy to bring down. In Grambling territory to the ground, it's Marcus Wright probing the left side and picks up nine tough yards before being brought down by Derek Wilhite. I like the patience that this Texas Southern offense is showing. When you're not in a, a hurry-up mode, still have three timeouts. You have field goal can tie it. Of course, you want the touchdown, so just be patient and run your regular offense. See a Grambling defender is down on the field, and that defense has really been banged up by injuries tonight. Jacardi Carter is the man on the field, and you have to wonder, you see some hands on hips right now, Eddie, if this Grambling defense is a little bit winded. Well, they're blowed. I mean, they've been out here playing football all night long, and keep in mind, this Texas Southern offense has run a lot of offensive plays. As you can see, Jacardi is, is getting up, but a couple of those linebackers, Eczema has been banged up. 59, Derek Johnson, not Jacardi Carter, I mean, that's your, your three linebackers. So you're talking about a run-oriented team, and you have second-string guys playing at the linebacker position. That's very tough defensively. Second down and short. Back to the ground. It's Martin Gilbert. Into the secondary and brought down at the 30-yard line. And now you let that big offensive line take control of this football game. You hurry up. You, you, you snap it quick, and you see if those young linebackers for Grambling who are forced to step up and play, see if they can make the adjustments and get the correct run fits. Grambling racing its personnel on and off the field. It's Gilbert again. Guts it up the middle for a couple. Right now, Texas Southern is winning the battle of the trenches. We'll see if they have enough time to have the patience to continue running the football with a couple yards at a time. They need one big play to get them down in scoring position. Again going no huddle. Second down and six. Nelson, play action, rolls right, fires, complete to the tight end, who is shoved out of bounds near the 20. That's Kirk Fitzhugh, the junior out of Compton, California. He's pushed out of the 
dialing up all kinds of plays. And I can't tell you how hard it is defensively you know, being a linebacker playing in college in the NFL when teams are moving quick like that you just never get a chance to recover defensively you want to try to think about what they just did on the left the next play and then they're back at the line of scrimmage you, you can't even talk to your teammates to work things out you just have to wing it and play on the fly this is the eighth play of the drive again play action Nelson runs out of trouble Nelson spins nelson finally banged down inside the 15 near another first down in field goal range with the tigers the texas southern tigers that is are thinking touchdown is nelson this is what he's been doing the best all night pulling the ball down running with passion running with heart getting first downs for his team texas southern has three timeouts left it's second down and three Hand off. Left side, jitterbugging back up the middle is Deshaun Daniels. And now a timeout call. Well, there are some players looking yeah, exhausted on both sides right now. These kids have really laid it on the line tonight. I mean, none of them have anything to be ashamed of. I mean, it's been some mistakes, but they have played so hard. You know, Grambling State and Texas Southern. The game has been coached well. Players are playing extremely hard. That's what you love about college football. You know, young guys going at it, giving all they have on every play. Well, now everybody will get a chance to catch their breath, including us. Right. Goodness, <laughs> what an exciting fourth quarter. A minute two remaining. And again, what's on the line? Boy, just about everything if you're these two programs. The East, that'll be settled in time. Three teams with three losses there. In the West, it comes down to these two here. Rambling with the win, they're going to the title game. Texas Southern, they would control their own destiny with a victory. A first down on the measurement. Plenty of time to go. Texas Southern, three timeouts remaining. You know, Texas Southern went six drives without a single point. They've scored a touchdown on their last two, and they're threatening here again for a third consecutive touchdown. Well, not only did they not score, they had an interception that was returned back to the three-yard line, and it was disaster. It was basically giving the game away, but you have to give credit to Arbel Nelson to get back up and to still make plays and lead this team. Right dots the eye, gets the ball, goes right side, and plows ahead to the five. It'll be second down and goal. Nelson running the hurry up. They are not calling a timeout. The clock is under 40 seconds and ticking down. Again out of the eye. Again, it's right, right, churning those legs and finally wrestled down. And now you gotta call a timeout with yep. 27 seconds, really taking a gamble there, not burning one before that play. Maybe trying to catch Grambling off guard with more of that hurry up. And now all of a sudden you, you can't be overly patient. Now there's a little more sense of urgency. Well, that third down, you don't want to play for the field goal. You want to play to try to win the football game. But I mean, quite honestly, unless you're at the one yard line, if you don't score in this play, you're almost forced to kick the field goal and play for overtime. But I like the play call. I mean, you're a physical running football team. They have backup linebackers in the game for Grambling. They're tired, they're fatigued. Hey, keep pounding with your big guys. You run the football well the, the whole night. So go at them, do what you do best, run the football. That's the strength of your team. Make your big guys either win or lose the football game for you. Can't say enough about Johnny Cole and this team, the resolve. Down 34-17 with all kinds of things going wrong, turnovers, penalties, bad decisions. It looked like this team was about to be done for before the fourth quarter even started. But they have made a terrific run, and now they are in position to win this game, which would be one of the biggest victories for this program in four decades. We'll see what the call is. Maybe you want to keep the ball in Harvell Nelson's hands. He's been the hot guy the entire night running the football. He'll have Marcus Wright behind him. Third down and goal from the five. Wright gets it. Dances. And doesn't get much. A couple. Got to call timeout here. That stops the clock with 19 seconds. 34-31. It's fourth and goal. 
And I think you're going to see the field goal unit come out of the field. Yeah, just not a good play. I mean, Grambling State, those guys play good defense. I mean, they're tired, but you know, those kids are laying it on the line also. Play had some confusion in the backfield. The penetration killed it, and Grambling State's going to force Johnny Cole to make a decision on a fourth down play. Do you kick the short field goal and tie it, or do you go for the win right here and try to end it all? Robert Hirsch is the kicker, a junior. And I would think with the fatigue level of this Grambling State defense, if we did get into an overtime game, Texas Southern would have a slight advantage just because of the way they're running the football and, right. and their defense still is fresh because they didn't play a whole lot today. Right. I mean, <laughs> and so if it gets to overtime, we'll see. But big field goal attempt right here. Will they ice him and call a timeout? You see Rod Broadway. He's got a couple in his back pocket. This amounts to an extra point. It will be from 20. Kick is on the way, and it's good. And we are tied at 34. 17 unanswered points by the Tigers of Texas Southern. And I've been around the swag for a very long time. I, I grew up going to the Bayou Class as a right. kid. My dad worked in the Superdome. And this is probably one of the most entertaining swag games that I've seen in an extremely long time. So many big plays, you know, kids putting it on the line, making mistakes, bouncing back from the mistakes, fighting back me down 34-17. After that interception in the 97-yard return to the two-yard line, I'm thinking there's no way Arbel Nelson gets back into this football game. Well, no question about the field goal. That's perfect. Rod Broadway, in a word, stoic. No reaction from him. He's got to feel pretty good that it was just a field goal. Mm -hmm. And Johnny Cole taking a deep breath. <laughs> he knew he knows there's no automatics at this point. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Down Not on all. one knee for that one. That was a 13 play drive. And I don't think there's no one sitting down in the stadium right now. Everybody's standing up. I mean, this is this is a big ball game. I think the players know it. The fans know it. The coaches know it. And we'll see if Texas Southern can hold on. Or if you never know, Grandma may have just a little more magic in their hat. Maybe they can pull off one more big play in the special teams game. Keep in mind, they've already returned one kickoff yep. for a touchdown tonight. Another squibber. Picked Has a up chance. At the 23. To the 30. To the 40. And down to the 45 with 10 seconds left. Grandma State. They're doing a good job of figuring out that squib return with that 22-yard kickoff return. The guys in the middle are letting it bounce back, and Thompson is still able to have some good return yards out of there. Now, Grambling still has a couple timeouts here left. So, I mean, you know, they could, if you're feeling confident in a freshman quarterback, mm -hmm. you can throw it downfield, try to get it. I, I would say with the leg, with a grambling kicker, Riazzo, who's got a long of 39, you've got to get to about the 25-yard line of Correct. Texas Southern really to even have a chance. It's a windy day. It's hard to tell which way the wind is blowing. The wind is kind of swirling. But I think they're going to take a knee and play overtime. I like that decision. And a timeout well, called by Grambling. Maybe they're going to think about it. Maybe they're going to go for it. You know, try to put put one more ball in there. Maybe just throw one deep. Maybe you get a P.I., a big play. What is at stake in this game? A lot for both teams. The Western Division of the SWAC comes down to these two teams. Grambling with a win. They're going to Birmingham. Texas Southern, a win tonight and then a win next week, and they're going to the SWAC championship game for the first time and a chance to make school history by winning for the first time in 42 years. So this hasn't just been an entertaining game. It's kind of been a nail biter because it's palpable. Everybody in the stadium knows how much is riding on every play. Well, especially Texas Southern. I mean, if Grambling loses today, they still have an outside chance to get in. They would have to beat their arch rival Southern in the Bayou Classic. Texas Southern would have to lose to a pretty good Pine Bluff team. So that could happen. But if Texas Southern loses, that's it. Yeah. I mean, season's over. It was a great season. You had a winning record, but there's no championship. Right. And that's why these teams are playing so determined. Well, let's see what Anthony Carruthers and company will do here. Heavy pass rush gets out of it and will be dropped for another sack. And at that point, he just got to let it run out. That's 
what Grambling will do. Shamari Clemens on the sack, and we are heading to overtime. Why not? This game has had everything else. Don't you dare go away. 34 all. We're back from Houston in a moment. Alongside Eddie Robinson, Mike Morgan with you here from Del Mar Stadium in Houston, Texas. 34 all a thriller as we head for overtime. The coin toss about to take place at midfield. And Eddie, I always thought it was the advantage to be the team that gets the ball second because right. you know what you need. Mm -hmm. It looks like they're talking to Texas Southern. One more reminder of what's at stake again. Grambling wins. They're in the championship game. Texas Southern a win tonight and a win next week against a team they would certainly be favored against Arkansas Pine Bluff and they've got a chance at school history. So a lot riding on this the first overtime period again. There are no ties in college football. If we should make it to the third overtime you have to go for two in that instance. One other key point to think about and we mentioned there was some rain earlier right now the wind is going to our left toward the scoreboard there you see the wind gusting pretty good so where this drive is going to start if Texas Southern does have to kick a field goal here they'll be going into the wind just keep that in mind it, it comes down to the kicking game which very often in overtime it does yeah, and Texas Southern they chose this end of the field interesting choice by Johnny Cole that is an interesting choice maybe they just feel the momentum has been so good going this way they want to keep it up First and ten complete and first down yardage that throw was right on the money to the diminutive William Osborne 5'8 162 pounds senior and Johnny Cole showing a lot of confidence in Orville Nelson in spite of the mistakes that he's made today he's had some bad plays but he's still allowing him to throw the football in this situation with the whole season on the line first down and ten a couple of tough yards up the middle for Marcus Wright, who has been a workhorse tonight. 169 yards on 32 carries for Marcus Wright, the junior out of Dayton, Ohio. And this Grambling State defense, I mean, they've been playing hard the entire night. They've been banged up, a number of guys hurt, but they're just playing off of emotions and just pure heart and desire. You have to tip your hat to those guys also. On second down, rolling out. He's got an alley. He's got the end zone. Arvell Nelson. Texas Southern is a defensive stop away from victory. Great job with the play fake inside. And this is what he's been doing all night. You call your own number. Good blocking on the perimeter. Texas Southern strikes first in overtime and Orville Nelson the redemption. I mean this guy had a couple of bad plays at 97 yard interception that was returned to the two would have way for him to bounce back going down 34 17 and now you have a chance to take a seven point lead in overtime. An 11 yard gallop for Nelson extra point. This is always critical in overtime. It is good. And now Grambling has no choice. Forget about the kicking game. They've got to find pay dirt. Well, the good thing for Grambling, you know what you need. And so on, it's four down territory. So you can pretty much call your offensive plays. You know, if you get a third and long, you can get half. And then because you know you're going for it on four down, you have to score a touchdown. So in that situation, it gives you somewhat of an advantage if you're the Grambling State Tigers. So Grambling will march the offense onto the field an offense which has really sputtered in this fourth quarter and now into the overtime period we'll see if they can reach back into the bag of trips and find something you would have to think Frank Warren's gonna be a big factor on this drive they fake it to him everybody's covered Carruthers will go down another sack Dewan Fulgham this third of the night Fulgham been everywhere the middle linebacker for Texas Southern 
great job on the boot fake, but no one's home down the field. And look at the closing speed of this defense. You have Fogum coming, number 44-7, Marquise Jackson. I mean, these guys are running to the football, and they're feeling it at this point. And that, that temperature is well over 212 at this point. We have to give a new name to the defense. <laughs> and you know, Fogum's pop probably watching overseas in Iraq, a proud papa right now. Yeah, I would hope so, because his son is playing a heck of a ball game. Second down. They need the end zone. Going deep. Down the sideline and through the hands. Good coverage on the play. It was intended for Bakari Maxwell. Zach Gallo breaks that play up, but it was close. And Zach Gallo, great job of not panicking. Just relax. The ball is in the air. You have good coverage. Make him make a great catch. A lot of times you see defenders, because they're a step behind, try to panic and grab the receiver before they have to. He just did a good job of going up once the receiver's hands went up and to knock that ball down. Uh, it comes down to this now. Obviously, four down territory. In order to keep the drive alive, Rambling has to get to the 15. Eventually, they're going to have to get into the end zone. But for right now, the goal is to get to the 15. Carruthers. Trying to dance out of trouble. Somehow still on his feet. Oh my goodness. 15, 10, and down there. And that will keep the drive going. A first down. And that was all Anthony Carruthers. 20 yards. What a play by the freshman. I mean, this kid is only 5, 10, 180 pounds. But look here. No one down the field. How does he get through that hole? I mean, that's two big guys who have both of their hands, all four hands on him. And he's still able to get through. What a play by the 5'10", 180-pound freshman, Anthony Carruthers. He was the second all-time passing yards leader at Independence High School behind one Chris Luke, former Florida Gator quarterback. And off up the middle and stuffed pretty well there by the Texas Southern defense. Now, no more first downs. Now Grambling has to find the end zone, and they'll have three more plays to do so. And Frank Warren, I mean, he's gotten his yards. He knew he was going to do his thing offensively for Grambling, but Texas Southern just hasn't really had a good answer for Carruthers in the running game. And this guy has been shifty the entire night. Every time he drops back to pass, you hold your breath defensively if you're Texas Southern because he's able to make people miss and create big plays by running the football. Frank Warren's going to block. Carruthers going to throw. In zone. Incomplete. He had one right there. If he leads him more to the inside towards the post, that was one that he could have had for a touchdown. Let's take a look at it. Mm. On the move. It's hard. He's moving to the right and is trying to throw across his body. That's right. something that you have to learn. That's the skill. He'll get better at that, but that's one that he could have had for a touchdown with a more accurate throw. Now you've got two plays now to get seven yards with a whole lot riding on those seven yards. If I'm Coach Broadway, I like the ball in Carruthers' hands. I mean, I know Frank Warren has been the guy mm -hmm. you're leading rusher, but Carruthers is hot right now. Carruthers, quarterback draw, breaks one tackle, breaks another, and is finally pounded down to the ground at around the two, and he is kneeling over in pain right now he took a shot jonathan hollins one of the guys in in on that pop brothers back to pass I mean, he's taking three steps back and he's thinking run he's not thinking pass he's thinking i'm going to take control of this ball game myself running the football and i mean this is it season's on the line for the texas southern tigers Carruthers with 96 yards rushing tonight on 17 attempts. It's fourth and goal. Texas Southern history riding on this play, which could be the final play of the game. Eddie, what do you dial up here? Well, in this situation, I'm going to go to an old West Coast place, Brent Wright option. Jerry Wright scored hundreds of touchdowns on this. The Wright Clark caught the touchdown in the back of the uh -huh. end zone on it. And the reason why is because I like Carruthers on the perimeter of the defense. Give him a run pass option and make Texas Southern tackle him if they cover the guys in the end zone. What a turnaround if you're just joining us. Grambling 
led this game late in the third quarter by 17 points. Nothing was going the way of Texas Southern in this second half. Then all of a sudden, the defense stiffened up. The offense got hot. Three consecutive drives with points on the board. And now, Texas Southern is one play away from a historic victory. And this is, this is what you came to see. I mean, this defense came into this game ranked second in the country, in the whole FCS, not just in the conference. You know, getting 9.7 tackles for loss a game, first in the conference, first in the country in Saxon. So if I'm Texas Southern, let my defense be out there for one play to win me the football game. Ball is spotted at the two. Carruthers under center. Gives it to Warren, and he stops short, and Texas Southern has won. <laughs> A memorable season for Johnny Cole and company, and a chance of history, one win away from the first ever trip to the SWAC championship game. Down 34-17, keep in mind, these guys had plenty of chances to mail it in, but the Tigers, the Texas Southern Tigers, just kept fighting back and have a hard-fought victory in a Thursday night game. The crowd has rushed the field. Everybody joining in on the celebration. It was a long game. It's been a longer road since Texas Southern has been in this type of position to win a SWAT title. They haven't done it since 1968. They have watched this team go through adversity. Johnny Cole took over this program. They won four games in four years. Now, they are just a week away, and one more win for a trip to the SWAC championship game. The emotion all over the face of one Johnny Cole. Well, Mike, what you have to realize is Johnny Cole played here at Texas Southern. This is, this is his university. He's an alumnus of this school, so it's not just a football coach coming to turn around a program. He's turning around where he's from. You know, he's, he's here. He's a Texas Southern Tiger forever. And so that's why he's so emotional with this victory. Well, it was the Carruthers show on this drive, but they went to the senior on this final play, Frank Warren. And I just, I don't know if he had any room, Eddie. Yeah, I don't think anybody can question this. I mean, you see the big guys coming with the power. Oh, that's their signature play. And you're talking about a guy, Frank Warren, who's probably going to be the all-time leading rusher in the conference with another big game or two. So I, I like that if I'm Coach Broadway. Hey, this is my best guy. Right. In the last four years, he's won me a swag title, uh, a black college national championship. Give him the ball and let him try to win me this ball game. You can't question that, not one bit. Well, now the, the updated status in the West. Grambling has an outside shot, and I do mean outside. A, a couple of things would have to happen. First of all, beat Southern. That's no easy task. And Texas Southern would have to lose next week to Arkansas Pine Bluff. And, and that would be hard to do. I mean, the way Texas Southern has been playing right now, they have been the class, along with Grambling, of the Western Division all year long. And uh, no doubt they will be fired up for that ball game. So they sit in the driver's seat, controlling their own destiny. And uh, everybody around here can smell it. They can sense uh, history in the making. And it all started that late third quarter. I, I, I don't know if there was one play, Eddie, that turned it around, but just methodically drive after drive after drive that just kept chipping away and finally tied it up and then winning it in overtime. Well, that's a great job by Johnny Cole not panicking. Down 34-17, he kept running the football and let, first of all, he kept Arvell Nelson in the game. I mean, he could have pulled him after that last interception and showed a lot of faith in that young man and so proud of him to bounce back and to play this type of ball game and to finish off with a victory. 41-34, to 34, your final. It's time now for tonight's Alexis HBCU postgame report. Yeah, a lot of turnovers early in the ball game, and it was a turnover field mistake game. And Arvell Nelson here early in the ball game, throwing the pick six to Grambling State, something that he hadn't done the last couple of weeks. Then 
scoring in other fashions. Grambling comes with the long kick return by Edward Patterson. And you think this thing is out of reach. All the momentum is on the Grambling side of the football field. But Texas Southern just not giving up, having that resolve. And then you turn to the second half. This is the big interception by Foster. He returns it back. Look at Arvell Nelson. But this is what you like about this kid. Look at the fight. A 97-yard interception return. He could have stopped. He did. He chases him all the way down to the two-yard line. Grambling went on to score on that drive, but it shows the mentality and the fight that he has inside him. Then the story of Warren can't be lost in all of this. This guy is the all-time leading rusher at Grambling State University. You talk about the Paul Tank Youngers, the Gants, all of the great players at Grambling. And then, of course, the great comeback, Texas Southern. What a terrific catch mm -hmm. on that hookup. Arvell Nelson leading Richard Samuel. The game-tying field goal. Johnny Cole takes a deep breath. And whew, we head to overtime. First possession, Texas Southern. Who else? A man that really propelled the comeback. Arvell Nelson with the touchdown to put the Texas Southern up seven. And on fourth and goal, the defense, 212 degrees, and then some stuffing Frank Warren as we look at the final numbers, look at that time of possession. That's insane. And yet Grambling almost won this football game despite accounting for just nine first downs. Texas Southern gobbling up 365 yards on the ground. Three turnovers apiece. Points off turnovers huge. But again, Texas Southern down late in the third, 17 points. And that's when the comeback of all comebacks took place, one that they'll be talking about for many years to come here in Houston, Texas. If you're Texas Southern, then you just have to enjoy this victory. The good thing is on a Thursday night. So you have 10 days to prepare for a pretty good Arkansas Pine Bluff team, but it's here at home in Houston. So you can imagine the atmosphere is going to be knowing that all you have to do is win this game and we're in the SWAC championship game. I have a feeling tickets will be at a premium for that one. <laughs> It'll be another electric crowd, no doubt, here at Delmar Stadium. Final updated look at the standings as Texas Southern winning at 41-34 in overtime. Texas Southern, there's a tie at 7-1. Obviously, Texas Southern owns the tiebreaker, controlling its own destiny, one victory away from its first ever SWAC championship game. They began that format in 99, but even before that, you got to go back to 1968. The last time that they won the SWAC, that was a co-champion year. There are no more co-champs and champions. You Mark go to we'll Birmingham. Definite champion. One and only one. Eddie Robinson, a terrific ball game, and uh, it was a lot of fun to watch this. The SWAC was showcased tonight and entertained many with this performance. Now, just a great job by Texas Southern and Johnny Cole. Now you've baked the cake. You have to come back next week and put the icing on the cake and get to the championship game. <laughs> it was a lot of fun tonight. We're going to catch our breath again. Our final score, Texas Southern needing overtime to defeat Grambling. 41-34, the final coming up next. ESPN Films, a fighting chance. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. So for Eddie Robinson and our entire crew, this is Mike Morgan saying so long from Houston, where Texas Southern defeats Grambling 41-34. Have a great night, everybody.